from of the board here. Uh, first up, we'll call the roll, Ms. Richardson. Present. Sorry. Thank you, Ms. Thornton. Um, so I'll just give a brief introduction as to why we're here. We'll probably wait a few minutes. As soon as Vice President Phillips, Phillips is here, we will start the process. We're here to uh, hopefully fill an open uh, position at position number five, our at-large school board position. Uh, we had a resignation of a board member. We opened the uh, application process open to all voting members of PASCO. We received, the board received and reviewed 15 or 16 applications. Uh, after going through that process, we decided uh, and selected eight applicants, which we invited to interview here this evening with the board. We expect each interview to take approximately 30 minutes. So we have interviews scheduled from 4.15 through 7.45 this evening. Um, at that time, the board will recess into executive session and will consider the qualifications of the applicants and the interview process that we go through this evening. And the board will have the opportunity to take action and appoint one of the candidates to position number five. It does require uh, the selection of an applicant requires a quorum of the board. A quorum of the board is three voting members to vote yes for the selected applicant. If for whatever reason we weren't able to get to a quorum of the board voting yes on, the, on a selected applicant this evening, the process would move on. We, we could talk as a board and, and talk about what we wanted to do next, but after 90 days from when the vacancy was created, if we have not filled that position, it would go to the Educational School District, the ESD, uh, for them to have a process to uh, seat another the board member in position number five. This is an open public meeting, which means the candidates have the right to attend any portion of the meeting, including the interviews with other candidates. We have asked uh, candidates that are not um, interviewing that we prefer that they're not here during the other interviews so that there's not uh, additional uh, knowledge or they can't listen to other candidates' responses to craft their own. Um, it's not something that we can require. We just show the preference to that because it's an open, an open public meeting. It's up to the individual candidate to decide uh, whether or not they're listening in or whether or not they attend uh, some other candidates' interviews here in public. So to get the order of these eight candidates, it was a random process. Um, they were drawn, names were drawn, and the candidates were uh, notified of the time in which they would interview this evening. So that's all I have right now. Any questions from the other board members or any comments? I have none at this time. Thanks, Dr. Kennedy. Ms. Brown? No questions from me. Okay. So we will just recess here until uh, hopefully Vice President Phillips comes. Our first uh, interview is scheduled for 4.15 with Ms. Josie Garcia. Giving you or did you already call her? I'll give her a call. Oh, already called. Yeah. Okay.
starting spot and we can all um, have additional discussion on that. Not in the Excel document. Okay. It would be in the Friday update. Sorry. That's right. All right, it's 408. Vice President Phillips is here. Uh, let the record reflect that in the roll call, please. And we will continue on if you're okay starting, Ms. Garcia. Are you okay starting at 408? We'll go, we'll go from 408 till about 438. And uh, I guess one additional piece of information I would add, this isn't a process that the board often uses. The last time we used this was in 2013 and uh, actually I, I, I think I, I know I was the last person appointed to this board in November of 2013 and sometime in uh, the 2013 year there was also a second appointment during that year so it's been almost a decade since we've used this so thank you with your patience with the board as we go through this process and Ms. Garcia So, like I said, we have, do you prefer Josie? Yeah. We have Miss Josie Garcia here. Miss um, Garcia, please briefly tell us about yourself, include any involvement in community service or school based service that you'd like to tell us about. Um, so, I'm, um, is it on? So, I'm, is that mic on? So, I'm a mom of three boys. Um, 18, 6, and 4. Um, my younger two are on the autism spectrum, and so I, I'm sorry, it's You're very okay. nerve-wracking, but um, I consider myself a parent advocate and, um, and children with special needs are um, my passion because my younger two are on IEPs and have to deal with a lot of day-to-day -day, um, struggles with the schools and um, what that looks like for them to attend. Um, I have created a parent support group that I um, support parents with other, their children on the spectrum, whether it be um, encouraging them to get involved in the school um, because some of them um, lack of language, English, um, lack of knowing the language, um, they shy away from being a part of the school. And so I encourage them to, that that should not be a barrier for them to um, a, participate in their child's education. Um, I don't know what else. <laughs> um, 
very passionate about helping all kids um, reach their full potential. I believe that everybody has a, a point of full potential, whether it be, you know, becoming a doctor, becoming a teacher, becoming a worker at Walmart. If that's your full potential, then you know, support that person in that, making that decision. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm willing to learn, and I don't know much about this, you know. But um, I'm very excited that I even got the opportunity to be called for an interview. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Garcia. Hey, why are you interested in serving on the Pasco School Board? My passion is um, the, the kids in the school district. Um, like I said, I, I want every child to reach their full potential, whatever that is. Thank you, Ms. Garcia. Ms. Brown. So what characteristics, in your opinion, make a good board member? I would say faithful to um, times and, you know, being on time and making commitments. Um, organized, organization, you know, skills would be a good one. <laughs> um, just passion. Really, honestly, it's passion for the kids and for our community. I guess willing to learn also. Describe the duties and responsibilities of a school board member as you understand them. Include what you think are the ethical responsibilities. That's a good one. <laughs> um, I would say um, to support all students, um, being whether they are on an IEP or they have a struggle with homelessness, or just be able to support all students what, wherever their families are um, and honestly just work together and try to um, come up with the, the best plan for the majority and even if it's not the ideal choice of your preference um, just being able to be accept that that you know, maybe somebody has a better idea. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Garcia. What do you believe the strengths of the Pasco School District are? Um, I believe that we have a very good um, superintendent. Um, she's very out. Everybody knows her. We know who she is. Um, that's very important for our community. Um, I believe we have very faithful and caring teachers and staff um, that are wanting to help our students, whether it is um, getting services out in the community, mental health treatments, um, uh, clothing options. Um, I've seen the home visitors really work hard to get their students what they need as far as coats for, you know, the weather um, strengths. Also, I see how the, the Pasco School District now is supporting, I feel like they're supporting more of the um, technical jobs, you know, where before I felt like when we're in high school, it's like everybody goes to university and everybody goes to college. But honestly, um, not everybody does that. And depending on um, your circumstances, sometimes you need to graduate with some kind of certificate um, and being able to make a living for yourself.
please describe an experience that you have had making decisions with somebody who has had a different point of view than you have. Hmm. Um, experience, um, I would say um, in my parent support group, um, sometimes you are struggling because some people want to say that therapy is all their kidneys and their kidneys therapy and sometimes I'm not so for that so I have to kind of meet in a middle ground as far as like hey you know if your child does good in therapy then you know that's good and my child doesn't that's okay you know just kind of like I said um, we have to be okay with disagreeing and not necessarily making it my way or the highway. Um, but I think every day you come into some conversations that you disagree with and you kind of, you speak your mind, but you also have to be civil. So. Describe your experiences in an understanding of how to work as a member of a team or a board. What is your opinion of how the Pasco School Board conducts its meetings? Can you repeat that? I sure can. Sorry. <laughs> Describe your experiences in and understanding of how to work as a member of a team or a board. And what is your opinion of how the Pasco School Board conducts its meetings? Um, from what I've seen, um, there's been, uh, with the school board, there's, you know, there, people have their, um, what is, what to say, like their passion, and so, but there's always, it seems like there's willingness to work together as far as, like, this is my passion, and I want this, but, you know, kind of meeting each other in the middle and um, as far as my myself working in, in a committee type setting I would say um, just always wanting to listen you know listening is good and before you speak and say this is what I want <laughs> because sometimes it's not you speak too fast and then you're like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> and so um, I'm always thinking, you can't take back what you said. <laughs> so. Uh. As a school board member, who do you believe are your constituencies? Oh, can you um, define constituencies? Who do, who do we serve? Oh, who does who the school board serve? Okay. Um, serve the families of Pasco School District, um, families and students. Um, you are their voice. All right, so the next three questions we're gonna describe, we'll have you describe, situa or we'll describe situations in which you might find yourself as a board member please describe how you would respond. So the first situation is you're contacted by a friend who has heard that there's a vacancy for an employment position in the district. They asked that you help them get a job. How would you respond to that? Um, I wouldn't. Um, I would refer them to the HR um, department. I would assume that they would have to start there. I mean. You have a question in your mind about the performance of the superintendent and whether or not she is adequately completing his or her responsibilities. What would you do? Um, I think uh, in this case, I would probably ask questions, ask um, Michelle and, and ask for a kind of understanding of what I, I like to ask questions 
and not assume things usually because assumptions make really bad decisions. <laughs> and maybe consult other people in the board as far as um, the concern that I have, but definitely speak up, not shy away from whatever it may be. You receive a call from a parent who wishes to file a grievance against the district for an action by one of its administrators or teachers. They want you to support them on this issue. How would you respond? Um, this one, this is a good one because I definitely am a parent advocate when it comes to um, supporting them. So, in this case, it would be I would I would have to refer them to somebody else um, because. I would, it would be a conflict of interest for me going forward <laughs> as far as I wouldn't be able to help them. <laughs> Will your schedule allow you to attend all study sessions, regular board meetings, special board meetings, retreats and hearings? What about events during the day, professional travel, district and school events? Um, I believe so. I currently am um, at home and uh, I do a lot of different little volunteer projects, but I don't have employment, so I believe that I would have the time and I have predictable child care for my kiddos and my younger ones. My husband has supported <laughs> support me in this decision. All right, Ms. Garcia, why should we select you for this position? Um, I thought about some uh, this kind of question and I, I represent a different um, demographic or I'm Hispanic, I represent the Hispanic culture, the Hispanic people, and I represent what would you consider somebody that has um, difficulties learning and when I was in school. And for me, that's a whole different um, perspective on school in general when you have some disabilities. And of course, I would represent um, my my children that are struggling with their education as far as you know learning and um, I feel like I would bring a lot a different view as far as education and what that means for somebody that has those difficulties. Do you have any final thoughts? No, I just, honestly, I'm honored that I was able to come and actually be sitting here with you guys, um, whether I received the, you know, nomination or, you know, received the option of serving with you guys. Um, it is a learning experience, and I am so thankful for this. <laughs> and honestly i i represent my fam my peoples you know my families that i um have advocated for so i'm pretty proud of myself <laughs> all right thank you miss garcia so as we we stated earlier we'll we'll uh debate later this evening with an executive session and if someone is selected via board ac board action this evening uh, they would be sworn in at our next board meeting two weeks from from today and I'll tell each candidate that as they as they come in as well so thank you for coming this evening if you have any uh, questions feel free to email superintendent Whitney or myself and and vice president Phillips and uh, we thank you for your time this evening thank, thank you. you I thank appreciate it Thanks. Well, you can. Can you print it out? Oh.
we didn't print this oh, okay. oh, right on here. there. So you have it there. We can use that as a, okay. or she'll bring it yeah, as a starting point for, for, for discussion. What's that? Oh, it started at four. give you an opportunity to introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, we failed to do this um, for probably previous candidates, but we might as well introduce ourselves real quickly. Scott Lerman, um, president of the board, been on the board since 2013. Yeah, Amy Phillips, I have also been on the board since 2013. Hi, I'm Amanda Brown. I was just elected last November. All right. I am John Kennedy. I was also elected last November. All right. Thank you uh, for joining us this evening, Mr. Prunito. Uh, we have half-hour interview increments scheduled. Uh, yours was scheduled to start at 4.45, but we'll go ahead and start it right now at 4.30. Um, I gave a brief introduction. We'll give it to each board or each prospective board member as they come in. Uh, we had 15 or 16 applications for this open position. Uh, after reviewing it with the board, um, input from the board, we selected eight applicants to interview. We expect each interview to take approximately 30 minutes. At the end of all of these interviews this evening, which are scheduled from 4.15 until 8.15, uh, the board will recess into executive session. It's an open public meeting, which means that um, any candidates have any member of the public or candidates have the right to attend any other candidates interviews um, the the candidates were notified that we prefer that the candidates don't aren't present for other candidates interviews so that there's no undue um, undue advantage there to knowing you know what other candidates answer and cherry picking from theirs um, you're the second interview today and uh, with that, we'll go ahead and start the interview process. So please briefly tell us about yourself, including the involvement in community service or school-based service. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, first of all, Board President Lerman, thank you. Um, 
Superintendent Whitney and members of the board, it is a pleasure and honor to be selected as a finalist. Um, a little bit more about myself. I'm, my name is Rafael Pruneda. I was born and raised in Othello, Washington. Um, I attended Big Bend Community College as a, a transfer student. And then from there, I um, transferred to Washington State University, where I received my degrees in Humanities and Comparative Ethnic Studies. Um, I since then have received my master's degree in Higher Education, Student Affairs. And my involvement um, in just you know, volunteering um, and being a part of just different boards has varied. Um, I think my first exposure to that was in 2013. I was, um, well, 2012, 2013, I was selected by former Governor Christine Gregoire to be on the Board of Regents as a student voice um, for Washington State University. Uh, that was a huge honor, and it really allowed me to be able to see, you know, the judicial, you know, responsibilities of, you know, running um, an organization such as Washington State. Um, university, and that was a huge honor. I had the opportunity to work very closely with the late Elson S. Floyd, who was my mentor, and uh, I learned just really a lot of just different responsibilities, but more importantly, about you know investing in the future and voting for initiatives and things that are really going to be impactful. Um, if we look now, almost you know 10 plus years, we have a medical school, we have a new football operations building, we have. Um, you know, just different programs that have just been instituted because of those, um, you know, investments that we made that year. I voted over $300 million worth of different funding for the future, which was a huge honor. Um, I currently am uh, on the board of a national fraternity. It's called La Hermandad de Omete. Um, it is an organization that I'm a part of. Um, I also sit on the Washington State University Board of Directors for the Alumni Association. And that has been huge and um, very insightful. Um, I'm always very um, present into a lot of the Washington State University Tri-City functions. Um, and then I also have been involved um, in very closely with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce here in the city of Pasco, as well as the Dia de los Muertos run. Um, I volunteered for that since its inception and have helped um, with that. And it's been a great pleasure to be able to be involved in just you know some of these organizations. How, how many members are on the on the Alumni Association Board? Um, the Alumni Association Board has 10, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Why are you interested in serving on the Pasco School Board? Well, um, one of the main reasons why I'm interested is because I come from a long um, line of family of educators. My mom taught at Othello High School for over 30 years as a English as a second language um, teacher, and much of the work that she did went unnoticed. Um, I went unnoticed because a lot of these students that came to her classroom did not speak English. And so her opportunity of really giving them the educational background and the fundamentals was huge, and it was very impactful for her. And, you know, growing up, I could see the, gr the gratitude that they felt for her. Um, I have cousins and siblings that serve in um, different uh, school boards um, throughout the nation, and it's just been awesome to be able to see their educational um, experiences, but also passion to be able to help serve. Um, and that has been something that has been instilled in me since I was very young. Um, working in higher education for 10 years has really allowed me to see that the need to be able to mentor and to be able to help school districts understand what is next for these students is crucial. Um, we are living in a time where first generation students are going to school more than they ever have in the history of our country, which is pretty powerful, impactful, but all, at the same time we need to be really able to understand what that means, what does that look like. Um, and working in higher ed and working predominantly with first generation freshman incoming students um, has been a pleasure and honor, but at the same time, there has been a lot of things that I feel that they should be learning at an earlier age to be able to help them understand that transitional process. Um, and I look forward to being able to hopefully be able to voice that and be able to give my expertise in higher education of you know, just different possibilities that our students here within the Pasco School District um, are hopefully going to be you know, obtaining very soon. Thank you, Mr. Pernita. What characteristics, in your opinion, make a good board member? Well, I think the good characteristic is someone that just kind of well-rounded, someone that is willing to, you know, give their time and be present in amongst the community, someone that has a passion um, to be able to help others, and, you know, a charismatic individual that is going to be, you know, able to communicate in just whatever setting that they're in. Um, I also think that someone that is going to be culturally um, competent is a big thing, um, especially representing the 
um, the district of Pasco, which is a very diverse community. I'm also 70% Latino, and that is something that's very, very important to be able to take note when the majority of your students are coming from a cultural difference and when the majority of their parents are, you know, not probably able to speak English as the first language. It is important to be able to, to have those, um, I guess, opportunities, be willing to make the, you know, the, the exchange of, you know, understanding that, hey, I, I get you, I hear you, I see you, and I think that's something that's very important for someone to be a well-rounded um, member on this board. Um, describe the duties and responsibilities of a school board member as you understand them. Include what you think are the ethical responsibilities. Um, I think for me, um, you know, attending your meetings and being present, I, I understand that the board meets twice a month and to be able to vote um, and be able to hear the public. I think that is probably something that's very, very important. Um, I know sometimes it can get contentious. I know sometimes that people will be not happy or just want to hear their voices to be heard. So, you know, you got to just be able to roll with those and, you know, talk to people, hear them out, but also at the same time know who your district is. You know, being able to, to go into the actual high schools and, middle, and elementary schools and go into a lot of these areas to be able to be seen and be heard and, and, and also hear out. Um, just different members um, within the school district. It's not just students, right? It's also our educators, people that are in there doing the work day to day. And I think that is something that is very, very important that as a member, we, you know, that everyone goes and does their due diligence and making sure that they are being heard and seen on just many different spectrums. I also know that it's important to be able to, um, you know, vote into certain areas that is very passionate. I mean, you know, if you feel very strongly about something, vote for it. And if you don't, then you know, voice that concern, voice why you're not going to. But at the same time, it's gonna be important to not just go off of your opinion or what you feel, it's hearing everybody else and understanding how that impact is going to affect the future. And so those are some of the responsibilities um, and those are some of the things that I feel that a school board member should have based to the knowledge that I have now. What do you believe are the strengths of the Pasco School District? Well, I believe the strengths for the Pasco School District is that we're growing. Um, we are the number one biggest school in the state, Chihuahua High School. Pasco High is number six. Um, those numbers are just very telling on how our city is growing and how we need to really be investing in their future. Um, I just was at Pasco, or excuse me, Chihuahua High School yesterday for career day, um, and it's been a while since I've been on their campus, and as I was walking from the parking lot, I just went over like, I, I want to say 30 to 40 just different portables. And that to me was just mind boggling. And then going inside and seeing students in the hallways and, and the crowdness of that was just really interesting to me. It's exciting, but also at the same time, we really need to be, you know, watching out for the future. And we really need to be making sure that, you know, all students um, and, and the growth of this area is just really looked after and that we are doing our due diligence and, and trying to see what solutions we can do to, to help that growth. So, so you think the growth is our, one of our strengths? Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. All right. Vice President. Please describe an experience you've had in making decisions with someone who has a different point of view than you do. Yeah, that's happened a lot, and I think that that's good. I think that at the same time, we shouldn't all be thinking the same. We should all have different ideas and different perspectives to give, and you know, hearing people out and being able to realize that, hey, not everyone's gonna agree is probably something that's very important to understand, and, and you know, I know that I've learned many lessons from a very young age that, you know, arguing and yelling is not gonna get you anywhere. You know, you have to be able to really hear things out and be able to try to understand perspectives from just others. Um, but at the same time, have a conversation. Being able to understand and relate to someone and, and let them know that you have heard them, even though you might not agree. But take their consideration and perspective into account. It's, I think, something that a leader should have and, and, and be willing to, to do. And I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, okay, thank you. Describe your experiences in and understanding of how to work as a member of a team or a board. What is your opinion of how the Pasco School District conducts its meetings? So two questions in that one. That is, can we do the first one again real quick? I sure can. Thank you. Describe your experiences in and understanding of how to work as a member of a team or a board. 
Okay, um, I think from you know previous experience, um, obviously there's going to be an agenda um, each board meeting, so there's always going to be work that's going to be put out um, with that agenda, understanding what is going to be coming with that agenda, and then just understanding um, you know the duties and what's to come next. So approving of minutes, you know, understanding what's going to be on there, discussing that, and just you know going from there. Also, really working with your fellow board members to help you kind of understand where everyone sits or you know maybe you don't agree on something but maybe you can have that discussion and talk um, and those are kind of just you know my based off of my experiences how um, different boards and um, different organizations function and work and then the second question what is your opinion of how the Pasco School Board conducts its meetings um, I think my opinion is is really great I think my Honestly, I, I've seen you all through YouTube, and I think that's a great um, stance to have for community members that aren't maybe able to come in here. And I really like how you all give opportunities for YouTubers to be able to ask questions and then to be able to kind of, you know, communicate or, you know, if they have anything that they'd like to do. Um, I think it's great that you have children come in here, school, middle school kids, to be able to talk um, a little, to hear you and see you and then do the Pledge of Allegiance and be able to be recognized and make them feel special. I also very much like that you have three student representatives. And I think that ultimately is probably one of my biggest highlights of looking at this board and, and hearing from them and the perspective. We're building these leaders and they are the student voices for their prospective schools. And so it's great to be able to see them to be able to be engaged and active and how you all treat them like equals. And I think that is very, very important. So yeah, I, I really think that it's done with the utmost respect and um, there's an extreme amount of professionalism in here and I, I really really do enjoy um, seeing that and so that's I guess from my observation um, that is how I see you all as a school board as a school board member who do you believe are your constituencies um, as a school board member I believe my constituencies are the, you know the Pasco people um, it's gonna be students it's gonna be parents it's going to be um, teachers, um, administrators, people that you know really are ultimately within this area um, and have a huge investment in it because of the fact that they're going to have family members or they're going to have their students or they're going to be themselves um, have a connection or a tie to the school board. And it is a big, big, um, I guess, institution that really is impactful in this city in particular based off of the numbers, based off of the growth based off so many just different things. And um, I really see, you know, that as being one of the biggest, um, to, what was the? <laughs> constituencies. Constituencies, thank you, um, that, that we will serve, you know, hopefully. You were contacted by a friend who has heard that there is a vacancy for an employment position in the district. They asked you to help them get a job. How would you respond? Well, I would say, you know, I can't help, I can't really get you hired or get you the position, but I can tell you that I definitely do it, you know, apply for the position. This is something that's great, you know, if they fit, are the right fit, would say, hey, I think you have the credentials to do it. Um, you know, if you need any help with your resume or cover letter or maybe interview skills, you know, maybe we could work on that. But as far as like helping them be hired on, um, you know, unfortunately I'm not in that business and, you know, that's ethically not, you know, something that we can do or I could do. So, um, you know, but I think that any opportunity in encouraging friends to be able to um, apply for things that you feel that they should qualify for or could be able to get, hey, you know, they have, I think, every right. But is there a conflict of interest? If, you know, I was on a hiring board or a committee, absolutely. And I would um, remove myself in that. And so that way there would be no conflict of interest in that situation. But I think that if someone is interested in the position and they're qualified, would definitely encourage them to do so. So next question. You have a question in your mind about the performance of the superintendent and whether he or she is adequately completing his or her responsibilities. What would you do in that situation? Well, I think, you know, if I had a clear indication of that, I would definitely, um, you know, I think maybe try to find the 
the chain of command on how to approach that, whether that be talking to a fellow board member, you, Mr. President, to be able to get any advice of how to be able to discuss that, it would be very, very important. And then just also to be heard and say the reasons why I feel that maybe a superintendent is not doing their responsibility or maybe their due diligence. And then from there, um, making sure that, you know, my inquiry is done so in a manner that it's not going to be questioned or unethical, that it is going to be something that I, you know, it, it, that is within my um, position as a potential a member of the board. Thank you. Yeah. You receive a call from a parent who wishes to file a grievance against the district for an action by one of its administrators or teachers. They want you to support them on this issue. How do you respond? You know, I think I would say that, you know, I, I, I hear you and I, I appreciate you trying to contact me, but at the same time, you know, this needs to be an issue that is dealt with uh, as a whole um, and that I'm not in any way able to be able to make a decision to be able to say that I 100% support you. I mean, I can hear you and understand the case and the legality of, you know, your right to be able to be heard, but as far as like making decisions and saying that I can side with you, you know, I'm unfortunately not in the position to be able to make that call. Um, ultimately, it would have to be proven that there has been some issues, but you know, that could be dealt with in probably a whole different manner than rather than just contacting myself one on one. So I would say, you know, I appreciate you sharing that with me. You know, under, unfortunately, I'm not able to be able to really hear you and tell you, you know, either or. There's a chain of command, and so you'd have to take your complaint to um, other areas and, you know, reporting. Um, and then from there we could go. And then if something happens, you know, ultimately I think that there could be a review or the school board as a board will be able to hear that and, and, and make their decisions that way. Uh, this question has multiple parts to it. Uh, will your schedule allow you to attend all study sessions, regular board meetings, special board meetings, and retreats and hearings? What about events during the day, professional travel, district and school events? Yeah, so my schedule, um, fortunately enough, is um, very flexible. Um, I have wonderful bosses and um, they're very, very, um, I guess, lenient if I plan ahead and I talk to them about you know what I need to do. Um, I'm, my work is actually here in Pasco, very close to here, so um, I'd be able to kind of sneak away if I needed to, have a lunch hour, or if I plan ahead in the future, definitely will be able to do that. Um, right now in my life, I'm able to be able to dedicate more of my time to specific areas, um, and that this is something that I've thought about you know, very seriously, and um, I welcome that opportunity to be able to do that if given the chance. Thank you. So uh, tell us why we should select you for this position. Yeah, um, I think you all should select me because I am a passionate educator. I am someone that has been working in this area. I'm in higher education for you know 10 years, and this is something that I truly love. Um, I love my community. I love the city of Pasco. I love our constituents and our students, and I really, really see a lot of talent. I had the opportunity um, about a month ago to go to Pasco High School where we're doing a recruitment event for Washington State University Tri-Cities. And at that event, it was really, really cool to be able to see um, a father came and approached me with his son and he had this big smile on his face and he asked me, can you speak Spanish? And I said, yeah, of course I can. Um, he had this big smile on his face and he goes, oh, that makes me feel so good. He goes, can you talk to me about my son's trajectory of where he's gonna go? And I asked him, well, how old is your son? He's like, he's a junior in high, um, in, in high school. And I go, that's awesome. I go, are you ready for your plan? And his son just kind of smiled and he goes, yeah. I go, okay, if you're a junior, are you ready for running start? And he said, yes. And I go, okay, we have Columbia Basin Community College here. Um, and then from there, where are you wanting to travel to, or go to, attend to? I hope you were thinking of Washington State University, Tri-Cities. And the dad said, absolutely, I want him to stay close to home. I want him to be able to continue that education and, and really take advantage of living at home. And I go, okay, so what's your major? And so we talked about it. He said, civil engineering. And then, you know, all this was in Spanish. And it was great to be able to let him know that, hey, we have a program at CBC called Bridges that works with WSU. And it's a bridge agreement of getting your associates at CBC and coming to WSU Tri-Cities. We have a civil engineering program. These are the things that we offer, internships, jobs going around and showing them like, you know, the classes that his son's gonna be taking, what math levels, what to be ready for and prepared for. All those things were something that, 
just really, really got me excited. And I just felt really, really good to be able to know that that conversation happened because, you know, I was able and ready to be able to go there with them. Having someone that, you know, ultimately can be um, a dual language speaker to parents and community members is huge. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that it has to be something, but I think that definitely gives me an edge. Um, it, I've had many opportunities where I've spoken to just different um, schools, parents, um, relatives and families about educational pursuits. And that has been any, everything from kindergarten to middle school to, to high schools. And um, I'm present community member. I am um, willing to be able to be flexible and be able to work and, and also to be able to listen to others. And I think that is something that's really important. And going back again to the board, um, you know, and, and the members of this school district, we have 70% Latino students, 70. And to have a board member on your board that culturally identifies it is, I think, of the utmost crucial importance. Students will get it if they see themselves in culturally identify, identifying with you there. And I think that I have those qualities. I have the, um, the respect of my peers and my constituents that I would represent you to the best of my ability. And if given the opportunity, I, am, I would you know, strive to be um, working with a sense of urgency, diligence, and purpose. Any final thoughts? Um, just know that this is something that I've been taking seriously for quite some time since I've heard the position being open, and this isn't something that I just kind of woke up and decided to do one day. When I saw the opportunity, I was just like, let's go, let's do this. I think I never saw myself as someone that could have this opportunity, but after talking to some folks, some colleagues, I, I just got really excited about it. Um, and my anticipation for this has just kind of, you know, ultimately accumulated to today, and I can't believe we're already here, but know that this is something that I've thought about for quite some time. I'm pretty excited. Um, I know that you know I would give my all to this position, and um, just know that I'm, yeah, I, I'm thankful for this opportunity. Thank you, Ms. Prunedo. Um, so our, our path going forward here is we'll go through and interview the remaining candidates this evening. We'll recess into executive session. Um, we'll have the opportunity as a board to take action. It'll take three board members or the quorum of the board uh, voting in the affirmative to select a, a candidate this evening. And if there is a candidate selected this evening, then they would be sworn in two weeks from this evening on uh, February 28th. Okay. Um, I, I ha it's a long day, so I just wanted to double check again, and just make sure that you know candidates that have already gone. If we're not here when you make that announcement, is that that's okay? Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll we'll, we'll uh, contact the the candidate that is selected. Probably we'll try to contact them by phone. I would think. Okay. And those who aren't selected, will also make contacts with them. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate well, thank it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
right. Welcome, Mr. Stroop. Well, we'll go you. ahead and get started a few minutes earlier if, if you're all right with that. Yes. So uh, we've been telling each candidate we had uh, 15 or 16 applicants. We had eight applicants that we decided to interview. We're expecting each interview takes 30 minutes or less this evening. At the end of the uh, final interview, which will conclude around 8.15, uh, the board will recess into executive session to discuss the uh, qualifications of each applicant. Uh, this part is an open public meeting, which means that all candidates have the right to attend any portion of the meeting, listen to other candidates, but we've asked, we've asked, we can't, re we can't in, uh, enforce that candidates don't attend other candidates' uh, interviews. Um, this evening after 8.15 when we recess into executive session when we hope to uh, be able to come out of there and take have the opportunity to take action as a board it'll take three board members voting the affirmative for any given candidate to to have a successful motion and be able to seat that candidate if we have a um, selected candidate this evening they would be sworn in at our next regularly scheduled board meeting which would be two weeks from tonight on February 28th. Um, we would hope that the selected candidate would um, enjoy their service over the next couple months and and uh, run again in May for the or declare their candidacy in May for the November uh, election. But we would also encourage uh, any and all candidates that that aren't successful um, with this process that we're going now to continue their interest in the school district school board. And uh, this fall, there will be three um, positions open. This position here, uh, my position, and Dr. Kennedy's position as well. So district, a couple district elections and, and this at-large position. So with that, we will uh, start off. And our first question is, tell us about yourself. Include any involvement in community service or school-based service. OK. Well, as you know, my name is uh, Dave Stroop. I um, have three children that attend uh, Pasco schools, uh, one at New Horizons, one at Pasco High, another one that was in IPAL. She is now, she's kind of in IPAL and kind of in Pasco High slash maybe New Horizons. I'm not sure. She's uh, kind of advanced. Uh, she's our uh, creative one. Um, about myself, I, I'm retired. I, uh, as I put in my application, I am retired. I worked uh, for 43 years for uh, a large uh, engineering and construction company. And uh, most of the time I was a quality assurance person, quality assurance manager, sometimes safety manager. I have uh, degrees in uh, industrial safety engineering from San Diego State. I also have a degree in accounting from uh, San Diego State slash uh, our local junior college. I went to uh, high school in Carlsbad, California, and obviously I went through uh, college in California also. And I uh, am happy to say that I was at a time when you could actually afford to put yourself through. and. Um, I was happy to pay for it myself. It meant more to me by doing it that way, even though my parents said, oh, well, let us pay for it. And I was like, no, let me go ahead and do it. It means more. Um, with that company, um, we had, uh, we are on all seven continents. Uh, we are the largest engineering and uh, construction company in the world, according to Engineering News Report. and. Uh, I was, we had four main divisions. Uh, at the, toward the end, I was the manager of quality for one of those divisions. And in that, we had, uh, I had 27, 28 major projects that I oversaw as a quality assurance manager. And a lot of this was putting together, making sure we had the right teams for the job, making sure that qualifications matched, and then working with those people to ensure that our customers, uh, which could have been uh, United States government, could have been independent companies uh, in different countries, uh, state, federal, local, that they got what they had asked to receive 
we were customer oriented to the nth degree that's one of the things that interested me about this position our customer here are the kids the children and um, I've always had to serve a customer and do the best that I can to make them successful and um, I want to make sure these kiddos are successful too uh, I have three <laughs> distinctly different kids and uh, with all different learning capacities and goals none of them are alike even though they're all from the same family they are quite different and uh, it's a challenge and uh, I'm thankful that we are here in Pasco uh, because they people in Pasco tend to pull together and it, it, it is much more, I don't know, it's, it's a friendlier environment to me. The schools have always been so open and honest in trying to help the kids uh, establish themselves, look at what their little goals are and help, help them in the right direction. And as parents, we support that. And uh, my wife and I have uh, been on many different boards with uh, the school district throughout the years, trying to help behind the scenes. And um, it's, uh, it's been a privilege. And uh, I think what I bring to the, to the meeting here is uh, my ability to work with a diverse group of people. Um, I have no ax to grind, nothing that I'm looking for, except a good outcome for our students and uh, the community at large. I think uh, we owe it to them. And being in this position, it's a uh, to me, it's a cherished position because um, you really can help, and you, we can help Michelle and her abilities to administer everything, and we can help her by overseeing what she's doing, which I've done my whole life, is overseeing people, whether they like it or not, and producing comprehensive reports that um, show them unbiased opinion based on fact. Here's what we have, and uh, it just seemed like a good fit for me. Thank you, Vice President. Why are you interested in serving on the Pasco School Board? Kind of answered that. I kind of answered that, but you know, again, I think. Um, in the past six months, I have become more interested and more involved with the Pasco School Board. Uh, and getting involved, since I'm retired, I have a lot more time to spend going to different meetings, finding out what's going on, what works, what volunteer needs to happen, and being able to participate in that. It's been kind of exciting for me. It's a, it's a new venture. Um, and. Uh, like I said, I've run into a lot of collaborative people who uh, they want to do the right things, and I like being a part of that. They say when you retire, you uh, they go, aren't you glad to be retired? Well, yes, but I miss the people is what everybody normally says. I miss the people. Well, I found out after a few months, I missed the teams. I missed being part of a bigger team and helping to solve issues, big, small. That was fun. I didn't realize it until after I was retired. So that's what I, how I kind of look at that. Thank you. Mr. Stroop, what characteristics, in your opinion, make a good board member? Well, I really think that uh, the board members, and I've observed this board, and I think that uh, you uh, have to remember first off that, uh, you know, we're here for the kids. And you have to remember the primary goal. And I think everybody on this board does. I've, I've always seen in action that people are genuinely interested sitting here uh, talking over issues. You can tell that prior to bringing up the issues on the agenda, you've already thoroughly talked about them. You've agreed to them. Whether it was something you really, eh, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't you got enough information to say this works this will work and I will go along with what the board's saying because they make good sense they have we've have all researched this and we can agree 
that this is a good path forward. It may not be the final path forward, but it's a good path forward. And um, I think that uh, you need to have that collaborative spirit. I think that you need to be able to work with others. I think that uh, one of my strong suits has always been working with diverse individuals of all backgrounds, race, creed, color. You're colorblind. It's information coming in. People are helping. People genuinely really want to help and they want to see things done in my, my humble view. And uh, I think that that is part of what the board needs to do. And I think that's what you guys are doing here. And seeing that kind of got me excited too. I thought that's, I'd like to be a part of that. Thank you. Um, describe the duties and responsibilities of a school board member as you understand them. Include what you think are the ethical responsibilities. Well, the board members really set goals, and uh, as I put down here in my little notes as I'm reading them, uh, they set policies, and the other thing is they evaluate how well these policies and goals are working, and um, they they act as kind of the uh, overseers of what uh, Miss Whitney and her staff put together as this is how we're going to get it done. The board really oversees that activity and helps to uh, helps to bring uh, uh, new things to light that maybe that the educators haven't thought of. And um, being that I'm not an educator myself, um, I think uh, the diversity of uh, of those actions uh, is, is really important. And I think that uh, the board needs to, uh, you know, pull that together. I believe that uh, with Ms. Whitney being basically our uh, executive member, if you will, that comes and gives us information. Um, and I think we take that and uh, we ask questions. We do our due diligence. We uh, research and then we come back and talk collaboratively among ourselves as to what we think is a good path forward share it with Ms. Whitney and others and together we come and we march forward with with something uh, that's probably maybe a little different maybe a little new but something that we the board thinks is, is going to work because after all it's up to us to help decide what policies and goals we're going to have. Thank you. Thank you. What do you believe are the strengths of the Pasco School District? Well, um, I think that uh, watching over the years and looking at the uh, statistics that you have, I'm impressed with the uh, high uh, graduation rate. It gets higher every year. It could be better, but it's getting higher every year. And I remember when I first moved to Pasco in 1994, um, it probably wasn't so high. And uh, it was, there was a little bit of, a uh, little bit of, little bit of issues going on here and there. And I think that that's been worked out. But what I see is the kids are getting more and more engaged. And I think that, uh, um, I think that uh, the high graduation rate is a testament to what the administrators, Ms. Whitney, and the board is doing here. I think that is a positive. Um, experience and certified teachers. I looked at this. Somebody said that to me once in a meeting I was in. And I started looking and uh, looking at seeing how the teachers were certified, educated, and how they presented themselves. I was impressed. We've got some really neat teachers here with a lot of good background. And when you talk to the teachers as a parent <laughs> and an interested party, they're more than happy to share with you what, what they're trying to do. And uh, I think that that's just a plus. They're very open and honest, the people that I've talked to. And uh, they really care for the kids. And I think that's a plus. Um, I think that uh, the willingness of the teachers and the board to engage with one another is another plus. I think those are 
very good strengths. Those are three very good strengths. So please describe an experience that you have had making decisions with someone who has a different point of view than you. Well, that's always a, that, 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 that is always a challenge. And um, the first thing I always try to do is see things from their point of view. Um, you really need to walk a mile in their shoes, if you will, to understand where they're coming from. I may not agree with them, but why do they think this way? And uh, you have to evaluate that and put that aside. And you have to look at what the long-term goals were for whatever project or whatever it is you're trying to solve and see if those goals align generally with where you're trying to go. And uh, you really have to relate to the other person. And you have to explain to the person where you're coming from. And this is what I think and this is where I'm I'm tending to lean and although I agree with what you're saying don't you think that this might be the same thing or a better way to go if I think I've got the right answer and if they've got I think the right answer then it's I think we need to you know modify what I was thinking and go with some of what you're thinking and that's what makes a good team is having people that uh, can come together and take a little bit from each other because we're all different backgrounds, different everything. And having that information is just, it's, it's, it's just a godsend, it's great. Because you don't have one person leading, you brought, well, you have one person that's supposed to be leading, but you have two minds that are working together and they lead together and move down the road. I can still say as the manager, Yes, it was my decision, my final decision, and I always did. And if something was to go awry, I was the first one to stand in front of everybody and say, it's mine, I will take care of that. We will go back with the group and we will come up with another solution or we will come up with additional information. I never let anybody take the blame other than me if I was the leader. And um, it's just, uh, you get, People start to trust you. You build a trust with people. And then uh, you can make better teaming, make better decisions. They'll open up more. And you find out, boy, they've got a lot of good, diverse information here that we could use. I don't come from the same background as anybody in here, and you don't come from my background. But each one of us brings something to the table. And we need to realize what that is. And if we don't agree with one another, we need to search out and go, where, what's our real goal? What's the end point? How are we going to get there? And how, how can we work together to get there? And I think collaboratively we can do that. This next question has two parts. Describe your experiences in and understanding of how to work as a member of a team or a board. And what is your opinion of how the Pasco School Board conducts its meetings? Okay. <clears throat> I've kind of danced around that since I've sat here. <clears throat> First part of your question was again. Describe your experiences in and understanding of how to work as a member of a team okay. or a board. I think uh, having open and honest uh, communication is, is a key. Um, there is no stupid questions, no stupid answers. Uh, you need to feel safe enough in that team to bring forth information. And it really depends on the lead. If the lead of that team is a collaborative person and not authoritarian or not uh, a bullying person, if they are really truly a leader, they are pulling out the best out of everyone and uh, trying to come to a solution. And as individual members of that team, we all owe it to one another and ourselves to put our best foot forward and try to see the other person's point of view to uh, try to remember this is the goal and knowing that we have to come out of there with a solution to whatever that situation was that benefits, number one, our students, and number two, is gonna be a testament to the strength of our board. 
And the second part of that question was? What is your opinion of how the Pasco School Board uh, conducts its meetings? Like I said, it's uh, it's a pretty well-oiled machine sitting back here. I can I can I've been to <laughs> more meetings than I care to, to care to talk about. But uh, you follow the <coughs> agenda very carefully. Uh, there you can tell that there is a strict code of conduct, and that uh, the uh, president of the board answers for the board that you guys have done your due diligence, and that he has. Um, the information from each and every one of you or whoever the acting board president is at that point and uh, that you go forward as a team and that's what I've observed out here as a school board member who do you believe are your constituencies well first of all it's the students they're 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 pri primary the parents um, to a certain extent obviously we uh, help support the uh, the teachers the administrators and everything with with good solid goals and uh, products forward uh, that they can uh, they can really teach to um, and obviously uh, Miss Whitney is uh, you know as our executive she is there to help us see that point of view and make sure that we are cognizant of what the needs are and uh, that um, we can uh, be effective and the whole thing is we don't we've got these kids for a short period four years a short period of time we need to accomplish a lot in those four years and uh, it's incumbent upon the board really to set the tone for how that's going to happen and uh, that's the way I see it all right <clears throat> the next three questions are situations in which you might find yourself as a board member please describe how you would respond in these situations the first situation is you're contacted by a friend who has heard that there's a vacancy for an employment position in the district they ask that you help them get a job how would you respond well, I would tell them that uh, there is a protocol, there is a process that uh, they need to use that I myself as a board member have to recruit myself from helping them get a job. I can't uh, give any undue influence to anyone to uh, help get them on board. That's an individual thing they're going to have to do. I would stick my neck out and tell them, um, since we are friends and I do know your background and I do know you personally that uh, you could use me as a reference if you wanted but that's as far as it goes I couldn't if someone came to me and said you know is this person okay I'd say well you really need to take a look at them you need to look at their qualifications and if they say well would you hire him and that's always the question that gets asked would you hire this person then I have to look at him and go well I'm not this isn't my job. I don't have the job for them. If I had a job for them, I trust this person and I can do it. But uh, I would tell the person who came to me that that is not my function and I cannot uh, recommend other than say you can use my name, but uh, I would not recommend them to uh, any other person in the Pasco School District and say, you know, you need to hire this person. This is a good person. This is it. Can't do that. That isn't ethical. I wouldn't do it. Not ethical. You have a question in your mind about the performance of the superintendent and whether he or she is adequately completing his or her responsibilities. What would you do? What I do, first thing I would do is uh, go to the uh, board president and have a discussion with the board president and say, these are what I, th what I think is going on. And um, I don't know if it would be proper then to hold a meeting with the rest of the members and talk about it, or if the board president would simply take it to Michelle Whitney and go, this is something that was brought up to me uh, we haven't fully explored it or we don't or we have all the information here it is or we haven't 
but we think this. And as an administrator, um, as, as their boss, basically, it's Michelle Whitney's job to look into that. And following protocols, I would go to the president of our board. You receive a call from a parent who wishes to file a grievance against the district for an action by one of its administrators or teachers. They want you to support them on this issue. How do you respond? Um, again, I would thank them for you know coming to me and uh, hear out what they have to say, but I would tell them the next steps are basically I have to take this to the board president board president will probably take it to Michelle Whitney and we have to follow protocol that's the way it is that's fair to you that's fair to the person you're bringing the uh, complaint against and go from there because if you break protocol and if you start making um, you start making promises to people that uh, you don't have the authority to do then it is, it is not a good thing. The board is open to scrutiny, even potential legal liability, and it's not worth it. Uh, this question has multiple parts to it. Um, will your schedule allow you to attend all study sessions, regular board meetings, special board meetings and retreats and hearings. What about events during the day, professional travel, district and school events? Well, as I said, I'm retired, so uh, I have no real constraints on my time. I do take my daughter to school. She's gonna get her license here in another few weeks, and she'll have her own car. She'll be able to drive herself. The young one uh, basically does things from home. I'm kind of the house husband. I do, uh, I'm a chauffeur, if you will. So around their activities, I have no problem. My wife and I would divide those up. If I had a meeting, I could come to it. She would take care of those things. I have no real restraints on my time or anything. I can devote all the time I have to this position. All right, next. Uh Tell us, Mr. Stroop, why should we select you for this position? Well, I think that uh, a lot of the reasons that I've already given, um, I uh, am interested, I am uh, motivated, I uh, am an honest person who likes to work with teams and solve issues, and um, I have the time to spend I have no ax to grind. I'm an outsider uh, of the system. Uh, as I said before, no one in my family will ever be accused of being an educator. Um, so I think that I bring something different from the outside, given my experience over the years with uh, following rules, regulations, laws, and holding my company accountable. I think that uh, I bring a different view to the board. Thank you. So do you have any final thoughts for us <laughs> or questions? Uh, no, I uh, have done some homework. I uh, look to see what uh, procedures were involved with this and I think I'm comfortable with the next, qu uh, the next steps. You've laid out everything. Uh, what would happen okay. and I just uh, want to thank everyone here today for inviting me in it was uh, I, you can't imagine the big compliment that was to me to be chosen to at least come here for an interview I really appreciate it and uh, if it works out I would love to be part of your team thank you Mr. Stroop is that it thank you. yep that's thank you. it I noticed I only had, uh, there were six questions, seven questions. Boy, you guys asked a lot more than that. <laughs>
but anyway thank you again I appreciate it yep All right. Good evening, Miss Torres. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Talking to the mic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh. We'll introduce ourselves really quickly. My name is Scott Lehrman, president of the board. Served on the board since 2013. Okay. I my name is Amy Phillips, and I too have served on the board since 2013. Nice to meet you. I'm Amanda Brown. I was elected last November. Good evening. I'm John Kennedy. I was elected last November as well. Superintendent. So uh, <clears throat> this evening we're, we're letting each uh, applicant or each um, interview candidate here know that we reviewed all applications. We had 15 or 16 applications come in. Uh, the board reviewed those and decided to interview eight applicants this evening. Yeah. Each interview is approximately 30 minutes, 30 minutes or less. We started at 4.15 and plan to end up by 8.15, at which time the board will recess into executive session to consider the qualifications of each of the applicants interviewed this evening. Um, this is an open public meeting, which means that any candidate or any member of the public has the right to sit in any of these um, interviews this evening. We have let um, applicants know, candidates know, that we prefer that they don't sit in on other uh, candidates interviews however it's not something that we can prevent them from doing uh, after we finish this evening at 8 15 and we recess into executive session the board talks about the merits of each candidate we hope that we are able to come out and we have the opportunity to take action uh, it'll take an affirmative vote from three of the board members here so the quorum um, in order to seat somebody uh, and if we are able to have a quorum of the board agree on a candidate this evening, um, they would be sworn in at our next regularly scheduled board meeting on February 28th, two okay. weeks from this evening. Okay. And we will let uh, candidates know this evening uh, so they don't have oh, well. to be here at 9 o'clock at night or whatever time we're done. We'll, we'll let candidates know uh, this evening. Wow, that's a quick turnaround. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so with that, we'll uh, give you an opportunity to tell us about yourself. So please briefly tell us about yourself, including any involvement in community service or school-based uh, service. Oh, sure. Um, well, I uh, was born and raised here in Pasco, um, actually just down the street. Um, I went to public school, um, you know, for all my, uh, I guess, K through 12. Um, Pasco High graduate, and then I uh, went to college, um, at Gonzaga, I graduated from there, and then um, moved to Seattle, worked a couple of years, and then uh, 
decided to get my master's, so I have an MBA from Notre Dame. Um, and then I worked in the Midwest, um, you know, for a few years and uh, worked for Ford Motor Company out there. Um, and then I decided to move back home because my family was still here in Washington and moved back to Seattle. Uh, and I worked for Starbucks uh, for a few years and then after that Microsoft and then uh, decided to move back to Pasco actually after um, being away for so long, kind of, kind of made full circle. Um, and so now I have been back here for a few years, um, made it back actually before COVID happened. Um, so it was kind of a good thing because uh, we decided really to move back to kind of just really settle down. My uh, husband's a retired military um, person. And so he was looking to just be like, okay, let's just settle where we're gonna be for you know a long time. He was tired of moving. And um, my family is still here. And so we've you know really um, are, feel lucky to be part of this community again. Um, I currently work at PNNL, um, and uh, and so I think when I decided to move back to Pasco, it was really important for me to um, you know be part of my community because I really care about you know the place where I grew up. Um, I also feel like it's um, the rent you pay for um, for you know living in community is to to be of service. And so um, throughout like my whole professional career. Um, I did do a lot of community service, usually mostly through my company that I was working for at the time. Um, at uh, Starbucks, I started um, working with community in the schools um, in the Seattle chapter uh, when I moved back to Seattle. Um, so I volunteered, uh, you know, just regular, whatever they needed, right? Um, they used to put on like an annual gala to raise funds, and so um, that was kind of a big thing that we would just volunteer to raise funds and um, volunteer at the event. I was also a school mentor, um, so for after school programs. Um, so I would go in, um, usually, um, you know, I would try, I lived in West Seattle, so I tried to, which is an underserved part of the school district in Seattle. And so um, I would uh, go in and, you know, mentor kids once a week uh, for a couple hours. Um, and they provided a after school program through them. Um, I also did uh, junior achievement um, when I was at Microsoft. For several years, they were a big um, sponsor of theirs. Um, so um, they not only let us go and volunteer during the day, but they would also match um, $25 per hour that we would volunteer uh, to the um, to the programs that we would volunteer for. So that was always like one of the things that kind of really made me um, really, you know, keep at it, and um, and I really loved it too. Um, that was. One of the things that I really enjoyed doing um, because it helped me um, teach like what what I had learned right what that I, that I had learned like later in life as a finance professional um, you know we taught kids how to like have a bank account um, you know what does a checking account look like what do you you know how do you manage your money um, so that was really fun and at the same time just really rewarding for me um, to be able to do that and then once I moved back to Pasco um, I am now serving on the planning commission uh, for the city of Pasco, um, and uh, and then I was uh, kind of surprised to have this opportunity come back up. But um, I just thought this was a really good thing to be able to apply for this opening because um, I think for me this is really close to my heart because um, education was basically the game changer in my life. I you know I'm a daughter of immigrants and. Um, and so education was my gateway to having a better life. Um, my parents were always very um, big on, you know, not having the same kind of life that they had to endure. Um, my dad only went to sixth grade, and my mother was actually a teacher in Mexico. So she was like, you're going to college. I don't care how we're going to do it, but you're going to go. And, um, and so I was just, you know, very lucky to be able to have great teachers when I was in school people that believed in me um, and I was able to go to you know two really good schools um, after graduating from public school um, and you know was in classes and in you know a college where most kids came from a private school um, and you know had a lot more privilege but I felt like you know it it didn't uh, my education and my and my public school years kind of even feel for me like I didn't feel any less I didn't feel like I 
couldn't compete or that I didn't belong. And so, um, you know, that's what's really important to me is that if I was able to have that privilege and that opportunity, I want to be able to make sure that other kids have that too. So, yeah, that's a, that was kind of a lot. <laughs> so hopefully that, yeah. So why are you interested in serving on the Pasco School Board? Um, well, I think I kind of touched on that a little bit already, but um, I also, you know, what I think is important too is um, for kids and, um, and people to see themselves reflected in their leaders, right? Um, that was really a big thing for me that, um, that I realized when I was doing the mentoring during, with the communities and schools, um, because a lot of the kids in the West Seattle um, schools you know, our minority kids, um, a lot of are from Latino and um, African-American households, and just them seeing somebody that looked like them um, that was a professional or, um, you know, had, a, you know, somewhat, like, I guess to them, like, sense of success, right? Like, they would be like, oh my gosh, like, you look just like me, like, how, you know, what, how, like, they would just ask a lot more questions and, um, and be more interactive, and so, um, it just really made me think like, okay, if I had seen somebody like that, not to say that I didn't have great, you know, mentors and teachers when I was growing up, but it would have meant a lot to me to see somebody that looked like me um, and that came from the same background as me, um, caring about, you know, what happened to me. And so, um, you know, when I came back to Pasco, um, that was one of the things that I really wanted to take to heart is I want to serve like the community that I came from. Um, and uh, and so yeah, that's what I think is the most uh, the biggest driving force for me. Um, what characteristics, in your opinion, make a good board member? Um, I think somebody that's fair and um, can think about not just you know one option that is uh, able to think at a broad level, right? Um, and it's also somebody I think that um, can collaborate, right? Um, because it doesn't, not one person can do the job. And, um, and it's important to remember that we live in a community, we work in a community, we, you know, our, all our families, um, you know, share this space. And so if we can't work together, then, um, you know, like how, how else <laughs> is it gonna really work? And so, um, so I think it's, you know, those are some of the big things that I think are essential, right? Like somebody who can collaborate, somebody who can see the big picture, um, and uh, and then bring like real recommendations that can help not just you know one set of interests or um, one I guess viewpoint, um, and instead is thinking about the greater good. the duties and responsibilities of a school board member as you understand them. Include what you think are ethical responsibilities. Um, okay, uh, I guess I hadn't really thought about the ethical part, but, um, but I mean, I think that uh, probably the, you know, the as I understand it, the duties are, you know, to be a partner to um, the administration, right, to the superintendent, um, to be a voice for the community and for, um, the, the people that um, have kids in the school. Um, I think, you know, maybe some of the, the technical, pre or the tactical stuff, um, you know, I'm sure I'll get into, but I think it's also, um, as I understand it, being part of like the financial decisions that go, um, you know, that have to be, you know, that have to be made for the school district. Um, I think when it comes to the ethical part, I mean, I, I would just say, you know, it's a, to be ethical, right? To to be fair. Um, I think I that comes to as second nature because I, you know, my career has been working with money, working with other people's money, managing other people's money, managing, um, you know, the my employers, you know, financials and budgets and um, and forecasts. And so I'm used to having, you know, like that fiduciary like responsibility and thinking about what's not, you know, like, I don't think about what's best for myself or, you know, 
something like that, I'm always thinking about like what's best for the company, what's the right decision, um, you know, how do we move forward in the best way? And so I think, um, you know, when you, when you worked in that kind of environment all the time, like ethics is kind of just how you do it, right? Like you, it becomes second nature. Thank you. Uh, what do you believe are the strengths of the Pasco School District? Um, well, definitely, I think the diversity of the community, um, and I think that you know, the the community has grown quite a bit. I mean, I've obviously it looks very different from when I was growing up here, but I think that's actually a good thing. I think that um, as this community gets, you know, bigger and stronger um, and more diverse, um, I think it's just something that we should be you know, proud of and happy about that, you know, we have a community that people want to live in. Um, and I think, you know, obviously the education of the kids that live here and the, the children that, you know, come from this community um, is one of the best things that um, that the school board could, could be looking after, right? Um, so I think it's obviously a strength. And then, um, you know, I personally know a few teachers that um, you work for the school district. Um, and you know, just based on the people that I know, like they're great people, and so I just think that that's the other strength that the com the school district and the and this community has is that they have people that are really dedicated, um, that love their job, that love what they do, and love the kids that they work with. Um, and so, you know, those two things combined, I think, are are really you know two really good strengths to have, um, and. And, as, and then, you know, just kind of, I guess, not really, I wouldn't say like it's like something that you can quantify, but, you know, when I look at maybe some larger school districts, right, like, you know, like in Seattle when I live there, um, a lot of the, 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 that sense of like close knit community is gone, right, because it's so big, it's such a big place, um, you know, neighborhoods are spread apart, um, there's just, it's just kind of a lot. And so we still have the benefit of being um, maybe a little bit closer knit, and it's a it's something to be valued too that people still care about each other and they care about um, you know what happens to their neighbors' kids. Please describe the experience you have had in making decisions with someone who has a different point of view than you. Um, well, that happens to me all the time. <laughs> um, you know, I've had, you know, obviously in my professional career, um, a lot of that. Um, you know, we don't always agree, especially when it comes to, you know, the financing of things or the budgeting of things. Um, and so when that situation has come up for me, I, I take my own personal feelings out of it. I've always um, put things forth uh, to work with people in a collaborative way by sticking to okay, what's, what are the facts here? What do we need to really accomplish? Um, and then I think, you know, the thing that has helped me the most is always focusing on what is the best outcome for everybody involved, right? Like, it may not be your favorite outcome, but if it's the best and it serves the, the greater um, good of things, most of the time, like, my strategy has been, okay, how do I convince somebody or what do I need to point out um, you know, that is going to get us to that solution, right? And then, you know, you just have to sometimes work with people um, to, to get you all on the same side of the table. I mean, that's really um, how you get to the, a win-win situation, right? There's never going to be um, a perfect solution that is like, you know, 100% for everyone. But, um, you know, if you can get a high percentage for most folks, I think that that's what's important, right? Um, describe your experience in an understanding of how to work as a member of a team or board. What is your opinion of how the, the Pasco School Board conducts its meetings? So there's two parts to that question. Okay. <laughs> and I, I can have yeah. you to repeat each one if you want. So yeah, um, so well, I could just kind of read okay. it here, right? It's number seven. Um, yes. Yeah, so I think. Um, when I think about the first part, right, the uh, working and understanding um, as, a, as a part of a team, 
Um, that piece, you know, that's that's also you know something that comes along with my professional like uh, I guess experience is that I'm always a part of a team. I my function as a finance person is to be a support to a team. So either I'm supporting you know the um, operational folks that um, that are actually executing whatever um, part of the business that I work for, or I'm working with other finance folks to decide, you know, hey, how do we manage targets? How do we manage performance? Um, how do we get planning done? Um, so all of those things, I think, um, have taught me how to be, um, you know, understanding of other people's interests, how to, um, how to work with folks to get them to, um, you know, either see, you know, the, the good part of whatever recommendation I am working on, um, and then also even, like, delivering bad news. Right, um, I think especially like you know when you're I, when I worked for example when I worked at Ford uh, Motor Company, um, you know it's a tough industry and a lot of times there's um, you know there's not a lot of money to be like hey you know we're gonna you know increase budgets if somebody's getting an increase in a budget that means somebody's getting a decrease in theirs and so um, it's not just delivering good news it's delivering bad news and how do you um, how do you get people to stay on board when that happens, right? And to be committed to the greater mission that you're trying to accomplish. So, um, so I think you know some of the things that help is to is to be a strong team, right? Is to remind people um, we're here working towards something bigger, greater, whatever it means, right? Um, and then I think uh, when it comes to the second part about um, how the school board conducts its meetings. Um, you know, I've been to a few, I've watched a few online. Um, I mean, I think it's it's very professional. I think people respect each other. I think that that's another piece of working together, you know, um, on a good team is, um, is that respect, right? Um, and I think that people feel like they have um, the opportunity to speak their mind and, um, and, to, and to voice, you know, that opinion. Um, and that's another good thing too is to is to listen right and that i think comes along with the respect is that you should have the respect to listen to each other um you know overall i mean i think it's it's a really good environment um you know on any team there's not going to be um you know perfect like unanimous like hey yeah we're all um and and you shouldn't expect that either because you want sometimes you know a different opinion right like you want um, different ideas because that's how you get to the best idea um, and so as long as you have the open dialogue and the respect I think that that's what's important I mean I've seen it um, in the the meetings that I've been to and the meetings that I've seen and so um, I, I think that's a healthy environment yeah. how long have you served on the Planning Commission um, well I officially started in December um, so just a few months. Um, it was a long <laughs> application process, um, but uh, but happy to to be part of the team, um, and uh, and that's been you know a good experience as well. Um, they're very similar in the sense of I think there's you know the open dialogue and um, and they invite um, a lot of public discourse as well. And so um, I think that that's. Um, you know, also one of the things that is very important, right? You have to listen to the, the community that you're serving. Um, and I think that that's what's really good about like the meetings here too, is like the accessibility and the and the ability for people to be part of that. Yeah, for being here such a short amount of time, that's impressive that you're already that involved. Um, as a school board member, who do you believe are your constituents? Um, well, the kids, I mean, like at the end of the day, those that's you. The success of the children is is uh, it's what's what we're all here for, right? Um, and then I think another big piece of that is is the teachers and the administration because they are actually the ones you know doing the work. And at the end of the day, right? Um, so those are the the two biggest people that are groups of people that I think that you're looking after, um, and trying to make the best decision for and um and yeah i mean i don't know i think it, it, it doesn't get simpler than that 
Because if their success isn't top of mind, um, then what are we really doing? Thank you. The next three questions will describe situations in which you might find yourself as a board member. Please describe how you would respond. The first situation is you are contacted by a friend who has heard that there's a vacancy for an employment position in the district. They ask that you help them get a job. How would you respond? Well, um, I would give them information. I would just say, hey, yeah, like the, I mean, I would assume that um, that positions are posted. And so I would just encourage them to say, hey, like here's the process, this is how it works. Um, you know, people, I think, um, I just, I compare that to, you know, when I worked at Microsoft, it's very competitive to get a job there. And, you know, people are always like trying to find an in and, <laughs> and trying to get, you know, um, you know, an edge on things. And so, um, you know, but you have to be professional, right? And you have to be fair. And so I always just focus on what the process is. It's like, hey, the job is posted here. Um, here's what, how the application process goes. These are some of the recommendations that I can give you to be prepared for. Um, and then that's it. And let, and let them, um, you know, be part of the candidate pool. Um, and I think then just step back. And if you're part of the, like, the interviewing, you know, panel or anything like that, and that candidate happens to be chosen to come forward, like. I think you have to step back and just say, hey, like, um, I, I can't be part of that because I know this person or, um, you know, and just kind of to make the, the, uh, the process as fair as possible. You have a question, I'm sorry, that, no, that is the right one. You have a question in your mind about the performance of the superintendent and whether she is adequately completing her responsibilities. What would you do? I think, you know, if it's just a question at the, at the or like an early stage or somebody comes and says something or, you know, um, maybe there's a confusion about, you know, what really happened in this particular situation. Um, I mean, I think you have to start with trying to find out the facts, right? Um, and if, you know, if it's something that it's on your, you know, if it's something for me like personal, right, like that it's, my, it's on my mind, then I would have a personal conversation, I think, with her, um, and to clear that up and be honest about it. I think that um, that it doesn't serve, um, you know, any good to um, to beat around the bush or to um, you know, kind of have that thought in your mind um, when you're making decisions or um, or trying to work with people. Um, it's best to just be as open and, and honest about things. And, um, and that's how you, I think you really solve problems. Um, not everything is, is a negative, com you know, even if it's a difficult conversation, it doesn't have to be a negative conversation. I think that it, it's all in how you approach things. If you wanna um, have a, a, a respectful and, um, and really a good working relationship, then you have to be willing to have those tough talks, but in a respectful manner and just ask, hey, like, here's what's on my mind. Um, here's what I think. Like, I just really want to talk to you about it and, um, and then go from there. Uh, you receive a call from a parent who wishes to file a grievance against the district for an action by one of its administrators or teachers. They want you to support them on this issue. How do you respond? Well, I think I wouldn't. I would reserve a response for, until after hearing them out. I mean, I would definitely give them an opportunity to, to, you know, tell me what they what's on their mind and um, and what they're really seeing or, or what they, you know, can, um, feel about what this is, what their grievance is about, right? Um, I, I mean, I, I, I find that very difficult to, um, to support somebody, you know, on, um, on, you know, like, almost kind of like taking a, an action against somebody without having like a fair conversation about it. And, um, 
and deciding like on my own without you know talking to the rest of the board or talking to even to that teacher or one or that administrator um, and and following whatever process there is there's always a process I think to um, you know with organizations to talk about like hey if there's something that went wrong like how do we like what's our process for for investigating for um, figuring out what's really going on um, and you know if needed like what the discipline is for that you can't just jump into something and say like oh yeah like let's you know do this and do that and um, and you know that that's I think where you get in trouble because you um, not only are not solving the problem but you're maybe creating a bigger problem by like inflaming um, the family um, or the person that you know feels um, that they've been targeted perhaps you know because we don't know right and so I think it's just important to hear people out but then say okay I hear you and here's what we're gonna do right like here's the process here's here's how we handle it in a professional and um, an organized manner so that you know we can find out what's going on and we can get to a resolution for both parties Will your schedule allow you to attend all study sessions, regular board meetings, special board meetings, retreats, and hearings? What about events during the day? Professional travel, district and school events? Um, for the most part, yes. Um, I think, you know, I, I have a regular, you know, pretty much a nine to five. Um, also, um, you know, I, I do have a, a bit of a flexibility. Um, I work partially from home. I work a hybrid um, situation. Um, and uh, you know, working at uh, PNNL has been very, they're, they've been very flexible, and they understand that like you're part of a community, and um, and that part of this is like my community service, and so um, you know they've been very accommodating um, with you know, uh, especially like I've already seen it with my uh, planning commission commitments, um, and you know I am lucky that I have a flexible schedule, so. I can manage my time on my own. Um, and so, I mean, some of the things, maybe there might be some hard lit deadlines at work that I wouldn't be able to move and so, but um, but I am pretty good about planning ahead and um, and as long as I know with time, I can, you know, work around things and um, and keep my professional commitments as well as, um, as my other commitments, you know, depending on what's, uh, what's needed for, for, you know, my involvement as well, right? Um, because maybe it's something where I don't have to like be in person, but I can call in or, um, you know, could be done virtually. Now everything is um, a hybrid situation. So it's been kind of actually nice and it's made things a lot easier. Thank you. So we got about two minutes left. Uh, okay. Last question for you before we open it up for questions from you is, um, why should we select you for this position, Ms. Torres? Um, well, I always feel cheesy like talking about myself, but, um, but I, I think, I mean, at the end of the day, I think I have a, a really good, strong professional, um, you know, background that could be very useful to the board. But I think, you know, really the main reason why I want to serve on this board and, um, and I think what would make the difference is that, um, you know, I love this community. I love this, um, the kids in the community. Um, I think that, you know, I just bring a lot of heart to, um, to what, um, what is being done on this board? Um, I want to see, you know, this this school district. I want to see this community be successful, um, because it's it's who, it's part of who I am. I'm part of who they are, and so I think that that's really one of the most important things that um, that you can bring to this position is just heart, heart and caring, um, and you know, having. Um, you know, a strong like financial um, and uh, and uh, like analytical mind. I think is just bonus that would come along with it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Did you have any additional questions for us? Um, well, I would like to get maybe your feedback right on like what you what would you see is a strong board member, right? I mean, you two have been here for a long time. What have you think as um, some of the characteristics that are really important to have in this position? Um, that have made it maybe, um, I guess not, e I wouldn't say easy, but have made, you know, um, 
your time on the board successful um, to be able to work with the, you know the administration and, and the superintendent Go ahead, vice president. Um, you know I, I think probably the two biggest things are being a good team me mem member um, the ability to listen and change your opinion if it needs to be changed and and stick to your opinion if, if it's if it seems like a clear but but to be able to collaborate work together I found that that um, when you're really open to each other's understanding you generally come to a similar you know collaborative understanding but honestly I feel like I feel like it's the students and their families I think that's just critical that's who we're serving yeah so I'd say a lot of the same things. Um, you want people, number one, that kids are number one for them, kids and their family, like Vice President says. Um, <clears throat> if you get members come in that, that that's not their number one priority, they generally won't last more than more than a term or less than a term, you know, if, the, if that's not their priority. If they come in with an ax to grind, they come in with a singular focus, they'll either achieve it in their first term or they won't achieve it and then you know you'll you'll often see them leave and I'm not just saying that for Pasco we've been lucky not to have that but if you look at you know school boards across the state and or country you'll see that so having the right motivation and then um, just being able to, to listen I think and like miss like vice president <coughs> Phillips said be able to be open-minded change your mind your first thoughts on on what the answer is or not are not always correct so right. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. We will uh, later this evening, when after we have the opportunity to take action, we'll let all candidates know um, what the what the outcome is. Not no need to be here for that Perfect. at that time. So thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you guys. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yep.
large, or if you are in uh, two of the district positions, there will also be two other board positions open uh, beginning in May as well. So there will be three board positions open on the uh, ballot starting in May with the election in November. Uh, with that, we'll, we'll have you briefly tell us about yourself and include any involvement in community service or school-based service that you have. Okay, so I'll, I'll start telling you personal things. Um, I have three children. Uh, my oldest is 18, my middle is 16. graduated from high school, and then I went to Washington State University, uh, have a degree in public relations. And then we moved back to Tri-Cities um, and started my family. Um, yeah. So that's personal, I guess, my community involvement. Uh, I think a lot of times my community involvement surrounds my children. Um, their school, their activities, uh, which my, my kids play sports, so they, I tend to get involved in that way or in schools wherever, whenever parents were welcomed, I, I try to participate uh, as much as possible when, when allowed. Um, professionally, uh, I stayed home. When my son was born, I decided to, to be a stay-at-home mom. Um, before that, I worked for the past school police department uh, but then when my son was born I wanted to be a, a mom so I stayed home for a little while but then I wanted to uh, keep my feet in the professional world so I, I had a lot of different types of jobs um, teaching parenting classes um, working with at-risk youth um, with family preservation and fam family re reunification programs um, and then when my little one started preschool, I started, I started working for Pasco School District as a uh, home visitor at Longfellow Elementary School. And then I worked as a student achievement specialist at Chiawana High School. And then, um, yeah, so I've worked for school systems ever since. Yeah. Thank you. Why are you interested in serving on the Pasco School Board? So when my son was in eighth grade, I went to a parent meeting. I think we were discussing, we were, it was just, I think we were, oh, they were discussing um, high school was gonna go switch from semesters to trimesters and um, there was a meeting at McLaughlin to, um, just to discuss what that was gonna look like. Um, or maybe it was just a meeting, just where parents are invited. And there was a board member there, and I had a, I had a lot of questions, which I usually do. And so there was a board member there, and he was like, you know, you should run for a board. And um, but at the time, my son was in eighth grade, and my daughter was in sixth, and then my baby was in second grade, and so I, I just didn't have the time. Now my son is graduated. My 11th grader is pretty independent. She, she drives and so basically I just have my little one at home and so I feel like I can, I feel like my family life is sorted and I have more time to invest in um, helping my community. And I think this would be a great way to, to improve the community for my children and for other children in Pasco. Uh, what characteristics in your opinion make a good board member? Uh, I think somebody, I'm actually not 100% sure. I, I, I actually don't understand fully uh, how this process works, 
Uh, I think with any position, um, being inquisitive, being curious, asking questions, uh, learning as much as possible. Um, I envision that a, a good characteristic would be someone who uh, is interested in uh, learning as much as, po as possible of a certain topic and then um, discussing or maybe asking, que asking questions um, to figure out how to improve upon the issue at, in question. Um, so I, I, I think I can envision that a good listener, a good, um, a good someone who knows how to um, gather information on topic would be, be a good job. Would be a, would be a characteristic for this job. Okay. Um, describe the duties and responsibilities of a school board member as you understand them. Include what you think are ethical responsibilities. Um. So the duties, I think, are to be present uh, when decisions need to be made. made. I, I think the duties are to um, it, I think the, the, the responsibility is to um, to take into consideration um, all of the information and apply that information to uh, to a decision to 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 help the the community of Pasco, to help the students in Pasco, to help the the staff of Pasco School District. Uh, so I think their responsibility is to be present, um, to be knowledgeable, and to share uh, your um, opinion regarding. Um, the stated issue in hand. Um, I think ethically um, it's important to consider the entire community, the, the community at large. I, I think that ethically uh, board members should not um, consider, for example, their own specific situation, but I think it should be that the board member should listen to um, to all sides or to uh, different uh, varying opinions and then decide um, based upon the best possible outcome, understanding that it may not be the best outcome for some. Thank you, Ms. Hogue. What do you believe are the strengths of the Pasco School District? I think uh, the strengths of the Pasco dis School District are the staff. I think that we have very dedicated staff uh, that understand um, our community. I think that there are people that, that are that there are staff members that have worked for the school district for years and years and years, and I think they they. They wouldn't consider working anywhere anywhere else because they love the 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 they love being a staff member at Pasco School District. I think um, a lot of not all but a lot understand um, the community within Pasco, which is you know um, a lot of uh, bilingual students, a lot of English language learners. Um, so I think uh, the strengths of Pasco School District are the staff and um, the community that we serve, or that, that not we, that Pasco School District serves. I think that um, it, uh, previously they have been kind of at the forefront of certain educational ideas like um, bilingualism. My son was... Um, in the bilingual program at Maya Angelo, I think Pasco School District was one of the first ones to uh, to implement that, and I think they they understood 
the importance of bilingualism. They underst and they understood that that's the community we serve, so it would be good for um, not only Spanish-speaking children, but English-speaking children, and how they could learn from each other. I think the other part that Pasco School District understood early on was how critical it was to teach um, bilingual children to higher grades um, because if a child is able to master their um, native language, then they're more easily able to learn a second language. Um, I think I think those are the strengths are basically our staff and that we understand the, the, the families that we serve. Thank you. Please describe an experience where you have had a making, excuse me, I'm gonna start over again. Please describe an experience you've had in making decisions with someone who has a different point of view than you. Personally, professionally, uh, either. 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 <laughs> Whichever one you'd like to talk about, or both. You know, I tend to have different opinions than people most of the time, and I think it's because of how I grew up. I, I was a migrant child, and so when I would come to the United States, I was not like American kids, and then when I lived in Mexico, eventually I was not like the Mexican kids. So no matter where I went, I had a different point of view. And so, um, you know, when I was in the United States, I had to explain, uh, no, this is not how Mexican kids are. It's not how you see in the news. This is how Mexican kids are. Or when I was in Mexico, kids had certain opinions about America and people, and I was like, no, that's not how it is. This is how it is. And so, um, and then, you know, I grew up in Tri-Cities, essentially, and then I moved to Connell, where Connell had certain opinions about what Tri-Cities people were like, or what Pasco people were like, and I'm like, no, that's not what it's like. And then I went to WSU, and I was, yeah, you know, there, are, there weren't very many Mexican kids at WSU, and so I had to, uh, I was in the minority again, and so I had to e express um, certain opinions that weren't held by, by the popul by the general uh, or by the uh, majority population, um, and then, so, I feel like my entire life I end up in places where I I have a unique perspective. And so um, I think I've had to learn that um, to, to, to be outspoken about my perspective. Um, but that doesn't mean that, you know, to me, I know a lot of people don't like to disagree. To me, I don't see disagreeing as something bad. It just means that somebody has a different point of view. Maybe somebody has a different um, upbringing that I did, and so we're going to see th view things differently. Um, so I don't know. I think um, I actually served um, at, at a school board at a private. My, my, my children attended um, private school um, in an elementary school, and I served as a, at a on a board. And um, I had different opinions there about you know, increasing tuition or whatever. And so I think it's important to, to if you have knowledge, I think it's important to share it, especially if, 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 that's the, if that's what's being asked of you, even if those opinions are um, not popular. Um, I think if, if you have knowledge, it's important to, to state it. Um, you know, and I work at CBC now, and I don't always have the same opinion as the people that I work with, but I think um, it's important to, to state your opinions, um, to work together and to collaborate, to, to hopefully come to some kind of understanding of how to, um, how the different opinions can hopefully bring about the best decision. So I don't know if I, I mean, I don't know if I'm, talk, I'm, I'm not telling you, I'm not giving you a specific example, um, but I feel like my whole life I've had different opinions than people. Thank you for that. Thank you for your for that answer. 
Um, describe your experiences in and understanding of how to work as a member of a team or a board. What is your opinion? That's that's the first part of that question. And then, um, actually, I'll tell you what, I, I'm happy to let you answer the first part, and then I'll then give you the Okay, part. it's nice that you guys have them up here so I can read them. So I'm one of five children, so so and I think so. I was born into having to 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 do teamwork, to to decide mom and dad to, or to convince mom and dad to let us do whatever. Um, I think um, uh, I mean I, I played sports, so you have to work as a team to in order to succeed. Um, I. You know, in school, you do projects and you you work as a team. Um, in my professional life, I I tend to have jobs where I have to work as a team. And then, like I mentioned previously, uh, I worked as a, as on a board. Um, but I in this board that I participated in, um, that was our job is to bring. To bring opinion, to to bring information about what parents were thinking, what par parents were saying, in order to um, solve whatever problem the parents were saying. Um, last year, my son graduated from Chihuahua High School, and um, the parents, mostly moms, uh, worked um, together to to throw their senior party. You know, so it was uh, it was a situation where moms got together and um, decided who was in charge who was going to be in charge of what and then so I ended up being in charge of buying or um, and for, I was in charge of an auction um, that we decided to have during one of the basketball the last home basketball game um, and then my my other job was to buy a lot of things for gifts for prizes for when the kids um, were at the senior party and so I got together with another mom and we bought and bought and bought and bought and bought and spent so much money at Target and Costco and Walmart and so um, I don't know I think I have a lot of experience working um, in teams at different capacities sometimes um, I don't mind taking charge if I need to I think it's it's typically not my preference uh, I like to be more of an assistant um, but I can take the lead if, if if need be, if nobody else is willing to. Was, I'm sorry, Dr. Kennedy, I have a follow-up question. Was the board that you served on at the private school an elected position or um, mm -hmm. and for setting policy and, mm -hmm. and, and finances for the school? Mm -hmm. okay. um, what is your opinion, this is the second part of this question, what is your opinion of how the past school school board conducts its meetings? Your opinion. Um, I, I mean, I, I, they get together and have a private session and discuss whatever is going to be discussed publicly, and then they discuss whatever um, issue uh, is at hand. Um, I think, so if, 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 if my opinion regarding whether I think that's a good process or not, or my opinion of, of the process. I don't understand the question. Yeah. Oh. So what is your evaluation of, oh, okay. of how the PASO School Board um, conducts its meetings, operates? Um, what is your um, um, perspective on the functionality of the board? Um, I think it's, um, so to be really honest, uh, I, 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 I attended a few of the board meetings during the pandemic because I wanted to, um, I wasn't in agreement with some of the things that were happening, um, but I mostly went and listened and um, I think I was able to hear, I, I was able to see what, what a difficult decision was um, to, I was able to see firsthand if you make this decision, these people are going to be mad. If you make this decision, these people are going to be mad. So I, I, I think I understand. I mean, I had a lot of 
feelings, emotions, because my children were, were being affected. But then being at the meeting, it was at Pasco High at the gym, it really helped me understand just the difficult task at hand. Um, my opinion was that the board members were doing the best they could. Um, they, I mean, the people weren't happy because because it was a traumatic situation, I think, for most of us. Um, I thought it was handled as best as the situation could be handled. Um, I think that's, I, um, I mean, I got to see that. Um, if I'm being completely honest, I haven't been super involved at, at other times, um, just because my children, I haven't had, um, negative, I, I haven't had like uh, situations where I thought, a I haven't had, uh, I haven't personally dealt with situations where I thought the whole, the board needed to be involved in any way. Um, so I think the, I, I, I don't know, I think the process is, it's good. I think the, uh, I think the board members or the board tries to be transparent. Um, and sharing the information with parents. I think when parents, um, I think parents need, tend to get involved when they're unhappy about something. I think there's a process for them to, to express themselves when needed. Okay, thank you. As a board member, who do you believe are your constituents? I mean, ultimate. I mean, the the students are, is is the ultimate job. I think that the, the the students are my constituents, but I think closely behind that is uh, the staff that are are that are meeting the needs of the students. Thank you. All right, we got about ten minutes left here. Uh, just a couple more questions, maybe two minutes each. Uh, the next three questions will describe situations in which you might find yourself as a board member. Just please describe how you would respond. First situation is you're contacted by a friend who has heard that there's a vacancy for an employment position in the district. They ask that you help them get a job. How would you respond? I would probably direct them to the uh, website where they could fill, in, fill out an application. I would give them information about whatever school they were hiring for if, if, if I had the information. Like for example, if they had questions about Chihuahua High School, I would say at Chihuahua High School, this, this, is, this is the setup. I, I, I think I would probably provide, I would probably encourage them to apply be, um, just because there's usually openings. You have a question in your mind about the performance of the superintendent and whether she is adequately completing her responsibilities. What would you do? Um, <coughs> well, um, I don't love conflict. It's not my favorite thing, um, but I think that if you don't address conflict it tends to get bigger and so I think that the job of a, of a board member is to um, ask questions and to bring up difficult topics I think um, it, I, I think especially in the last few years the job of a board member has not been easy um, because people have very wildly different uh, ideas on how different topics different situations should be handled. Um, if I feel that the superintendent is not living up to the responsibilities of the job, I think it's definitely an issue that should be addressed um, with the superintendent, hopefully directly. I mean, I don't know if there's already a, a I, would, I would probably find out if, there's a, if there is currently a, a protocol, if, if that situation came up, if there is a protocol, then I would probably follow that protocol if there is no protocol, then I would probably have a conversation um, 
directly with the superintendent if I didn't feel like my questions were answered then I would probably um, have a conversation with the board president and maybe ask for some feedback on how this issue could be addressed. You receive a call from a parent who wishes to file a grievance against the district for an action by one of its administrators or teachers. They want you to support them on this issue. How would you respond? Um, again, I would, I would, first I would find out what the protocol is uh, for this exact situation. Um, I imagine that there is a protocol uh, in place. Uh, I would think that this, that um, if a parent feels like there's a grievance, they, they should, um, they should uh, provide as much information as possible regarding that grievance and um, and uh, I don't know that I would support them unless I pers I had personal information regarding the issue I think if I had personal information then then I might um, try to address that I, I I have found that usually if there's a, an issue with this with a specific staff member I, I it, it's usually addressed directly um, I don't know, I don't think that I could support the grievance if I didn't have any personal, no, direct and personal knowledge regarding the grievance. Um, but I would encourage them to follow, to, to follow the, the protocol or to, to, to have that grievance heard. Will your schedule allow you to attend study sessions, regular board meetings, special board meetings, retreats, and hearings? What about events during the day, professional travel, and district and school events? Um, so I talked to my supervisor about before I applied for this position, and I work at um, Columbia Basin College, and they encourage they encourage, um, uh, they, they encourage um, their staff to, to be involved in the community. Um, provided that the job is done, there are certain times during the the school year that I'm that probably will not allow me to to um, to leave or to spend too much time uh, away from my job during during the day. Um, but I'm pretty strict about leaving work when it's time to leave. Um, I I. I I believe that if you work hard during the day, then you don't need to work extra hours. Um, I think the CBC is pretty good about ensuring that we have the time um, during during our work hours to, to get our work done. Uh, I have a team of about 11 people um, in my department. If I need help, they are always more than willing to help. Um, so I, I do think um, our there is some flexibility, um, and they they do encourage us to participate in community um, type of endeavors. Um, there are certain times, however, that I I need I I can't take any time off. Uh, Board President Lemmerk, yeah, Can I just make a, this is a clarifying question? So the uh, study sessions are at 4:30 p.m. and the oh. regular board meetings are at 6:30 p.m. Um, on yeah. average be able to attend those? Those, yes. I was talking about like the other ones, like retreats and hearings. I don't know when retreats and hearings are held. Um, but board, special, uh, regular board meeting, study sessions, regular board meetings, and special board meetings, I think would be pretty, they're always after 4.30, right? Generally. Or generally. Yeah. yeah, so that would be fine. I, my, my work day ends at 4.30. So uh, in a minute or so, we got to wrap this up. Last question, why should we select you for this uh, position, Ms. Hope? I think I, in many ways, represent the typical Pasco School District student. Um, I am passionate about this community. I love education, and like I, anytime there's 
any kind of article written about education. Like I love learning the the complexity of it um, in in every different facet, you know, in, in, in every level. I have so much knowledge, I think, um, because I've worked at the different levels. You know, I was a home visitor. I was a student achievement specialist. I was a substitute teacher. I worked at a career center. Um, and then now I'm, I work at CBC where I understand uh, the, the students that are coming, we understand where they're missing or what what's missing uh, about um, what what's preventing them from being successful um, but I do think however that regardless of how much knowledge I have I have um, I have I, I love the community that that we live in like I we chose to live in Pasco um, you know and we I, I I, I honestly didn't didn't even cons could couldn't I imagine not not living in Pasco when my choices were Richland, Kennewick, or Pasco. My husband is not from around here, but it was never a choice. It was never a possibility in my mind. Um, I understand how difficult um, some of the issues that are that our families face, um, but I think that. Uh, I think that our schools provide stability for a lot of our students, and I, I'm, I have been humbled uh, when I see certain teachers, and like when I worked at Longfellow, they would never even consider teaching at Livingston because Longfellow kids are their kids. It doesn't matter, um, not, it, it doesn't matter that they live right by Livingston. They are Longfellow. Uh, uh, teachers and so um, I I have a lot of admiration for that um, but I yeah so I think on a on a personal level I, I, I am a product of Pasco School Di District and now as a parent um, I have seen um, how my children absolutely love the high school that they go to um, they love their their teachers um, and so and I understand that not every child has that experience but I would love for every child to have that experience and so if we could um, ensure continue to ensure that um, children have a, a positive experience when they're at their school like I think that would be that's a that's a goal of that would be a goal of mine all right thank you so we'll let, we'll let the uh, people who um, had interviews with us this evening know of our decision um, when, when that's available later this evening. By email, by phone? Most likely by phone. You got their phone numbers? Okay, well it'll be, it'll be we'll streaming online. We'll, we'll announce it publicly and then we'll, we'll uh, make phone calls as well. Maybe tomorrow on the phone calls, but it'll be available on YouTube. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. A little bit we're trying to keep each interview to a half hour or less uh, we'll give we'll give you the full half hour if you need it um, uh, we're starting at 657 and um, we're telling each candidate we had 15 or 16 applicants uh, for this position selected eight applicants to interview this evening each interview we're estimating to take 30 minutes or less after we've interviewed everybody, ending at approximately 8.15, we'll recess into executive session. 
uh, be able to talk about and consider the qualifications of the applicants that we interviewed. Um, this is an open public meeting, so any candidates, any member of the public has the right to uh, sit in any of these interview sessions, but we've asked candidates that we prefer that they don't sit in uh, sessions for other, other prospective candidates. Um, after the ex executive session this evening, we'll have a chance to take action. Uh, for someone to be seated, it would take a quorum of the board or three, three um, board members voting in the affirmative or yes for a given candidate. Uh, if, they, if we're able to come to that resolution this evening, um, we would seat and the, the new board member would take the oath of office on uh, two weeks from this evening, which would be February 28th. And then uh, some of us know you will introduce ourselves and then we'll kick off the interview. So Scott Lerman served on the board since uh, 2013. Amy Phillips served on the board since 2013. Amanda Brown, I was elected last November. I am John Kennedy, I was elected last November too. So we would hope that uh, a, a a whoever selected for this position would enjoy their time on the board and in May hopefully decide to uh, run for that uh, for the office again uh, and those who aren't selected there will be this position along with my position and Dr. Kennedy's uh, position if, if the candidates live in the correct district which will also be open for election for the November election with candidates declaring in May so with that we'll start with our questions this evening uh, please briefly tell us about yourself including any involvement in community service or school-based service all right, um, I, where do I start? Um, I grew up in a few different places, mostly in Michigan. I got my bachelor's degree at Brigham University in Utah in business management with an emphasis in marketing and a minor in English. Um, after graduating, I got married the day after I graduated and worked for about a year um, for an export company and until I had my first child. I've continued with that company just to do a, a tiny bit of contract work, um, doing sales and expense analyses for them each year. Um, for the last 19 years, my oldest turned 19 yesterday, um, I've mostly been a stay-at-home mom um, as a part of, I, well, I have nine children. The oldest uh, graduated last spring from Pasco High. She's a freshman at college. And then I have a son that's a junior. Um, I have a daughter that passed away from leukemia. She would be in 10th grade. Then I have a son that's in eighth, a daughter that's in seventh, a son that's in fifth, a daughter that's in fourth, a daughter in first, and a son in kinder. Um, so, uh, you know, for the last 19 years, um, been involved in their lives and in the schools just as a part of, you know, part of them. Um, done PTO, I've been on the board, on PTO boards for different times, and then I've chaired PTO events, I think every year I've done at least one or two events. Um, I volunteer at field trips, uh, PASCO, um, band concessions, um, trying to think what else, you know, just all those things that come with having kids, attend all their concerts, all their sports stuff. Um, I've also been on the district level, I was on the highly capable advisory committee for a few years. I was on the, I'm going to try to say it right, the long term facilities management planning committee <laughs> I was on that um, I've been on the bond campaign committee for the last two bonds um, so just you know had some involvement in that way and then my youngest started kindergarten this fall so I signed up as a substitute teacher so I've been doing that for the last few months just one or two days a week um, you know to, to be involved in the schools but to still have time to do all the other things that I want to be doing so I think that's a little bit about me. Thank you. <laughs> Why are you interested in serving on the Pasco School Board? Um, just because I, I see how important it is, the things that the school board is doing, that they really set the tone for the whole district, for what's happening. You know, the, the school board's choosing the, the high level decisions, but it all trickles down, and those high level decisions have, you know, very direct impacts on on my kids daily lives and you know the kids all the other kids so um, I just want to be be a part of making sure that we're making those best decisions for everyone here in Pasco uh, 
Uh, what characteristics, in your opinion, make a good board member? Um, someone that is reliable, that's committed, um, that has an open mind, that you know is willing to to work with others, to communicate, um, and just to get the job done. Describe the duties and responsibilities of a board member as you understand them. Include what you think are are the ethical responsibilities. Um, so, kind of like I said, the you know the school board is making those high level policy decisions, setting the the vision and the tone of what we want the the school district to do, and then um, following up with our, you know with our superintendent and other um, district employees to make sure that they're actually doing. You know, following this vision that we've set um, ethically, I just think it's important to to always be looking at the big picture, you not have any special interests that you're focused on, um, and you know, and to recognize that what might be best for me isn't going to be what's best for Pasco as a whole, and just being willing to sometimes make those choices that that I won't necessarily like, but that I know is going to be better for everybody. What do you believe are the strengths of the Pasco School District? Um, so I, I love the outrageous outcomes that the, that the school board created a few years ago. I love how, I mean, I love what they are. They're just uh, great goals. They kind of encompass everything that we want a school to be doing. Um, and I just love that how laser focused the district is on achieving those goals and really trying to make them happen. Um, I just think another strength is there's just so much Pasco pride. Um, I just see it um, at all the schools, you know, as I'm at different events that pe people just love Pasco and they're willing to um, put in the work and the effort to make it better. Um, so yeah, there's just a lot of pride. Please describe an experience you have had in making decisions with someone who has a different point of view than you. Okay, um, <laughs> so I've been, like I said, I've been on a number of boards, um, you know, which, so there's lots of times that people have a different opinion than me. Um, you know, one, one example that comes to mind, I was on the boundary committee, I don't remember if I mentioned that one, um, this last time that we built a couple elementaries and middle schools, and so we redid the boundaries of every, every elementary and middle school in the district, um, but I was on the committee that helped um, come up with that plan. And, you know, one of the things, I was the, I was the parent advocate. Everybody else on the committee had some sort of district role, um, but I was there to represent the parents. And so one thing that I believe very strongly was parents want their kids to just go to the school that's near them. <laughs> so that was kind of, you know, just kept beating that drum. They just, just let them go to the school near them. Um, and said that over and over, and you know, and as we crafted the boundary lines, um, you'd hear the other arguments. What about this? What about this? And um, but we really did try to stay true to that. Um, on the flip side, there's one, you know, one of the neighborhoods that we looked at. Most of the committee said, "Oh, they should go to this school," and I really thought that was not the right choice. I thought that neighborhood needed to be a different school, and you know, I spoke up two or three times. Um, voicing my opinion, but then saw that really I was really the minority. Everybody else thought they should be at this school, and so I was willing to just back down and say, "Okay, you know, that's that's the consensus. Let's move forward." Um, so I do. I try to. I'm not afraid to share my opinion, but I also recognize that my opinion can be wrong, um, and so I I try to once a consensus is reached to you know go with the group and and move forward. No, no, you go ahead. Um, this, this question has two parts to it. The first question is, and I'll read um, each one separately. Um, describe your experiences in an understanding of how to work as a member of a team or a board. Okay, so I, that's kind of what I, I just talked about. But yeah, that you need to, you know, you need to communicate. You need to share your ideas and your opinions. Um, and have those conversations, it needs to be done respectfully, recognizing that everybody has a different perspective and experience that they're coming from. But then at the end, once 
that decision has been made. Um, it's important to move forward because there's a lot more decisions that we need to move on to. Um, you know, so just moving forward with um, with good feelings towards everyone that we're just all doing. We're all we all have the same goal. We're trying to make this the best school district we can, um, and just recognizing that we're coming from different perspectives, but we have that same goal, and so we're going to get there. As school board member, who do you believe are your constituents? Oh, actually, uh, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, second, second part. part. Second part. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> One other part to the My question. Bad. Uh, not so. No worries. Um, uh, the second part to that question is, what is your opinion of how the school board conducts its meetings? How a school board? How the Pasco school board? How the Pasco school board? Um, I, I've been really impressed. Um, I don't attend all the meetings in person or I haven't up to this point, but I've, since they've been live streamed, I've watched just about every single one. Um, and I'm impressed with how organized it is, how um, respectful all of the board members are, generally how respectful the audience is. Um, like I said, I feel like we are laser focused on these five outcomes um, and getting that work done. And it, I don't see too often that people are going off on tangents and, um, getting into the weeds where they don't need to be. So I, I think we're doing really well. Thank you. As a school board member, who do you believe are your constituents? Um, so my constituents would be, of course, the kids would be first, along with their families, um, the teachers, and all the, all the staff um, that work to make uh, this district so amazing, and then the community members at large, because that's, you know, they're the ones providing us with the resources that we have to do what we do. So the next uh, three questions are situations in which you might find yourself as a board member. Please describe how you would respond in these situations. First situation is you're contacted by a friend who has heard there's a vacancy for an employment position in the district. They ask that you help them to get the job. How would you respond? Um, I mean, I might, you know, walk them through the steps. Here's the website. Here's the, you know, here's what you need to do. Um, but beyond that, it's not, that's up to the HR department. I'm not involved. I mean, I know that we as a board or as a board, you do the final consent, but I imagine you're not actually looking at any of those applications. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I would just tell them that that's, they need to go to the HR department and go through that process. Thank you. You have a question in your mind about the performance of the superintendent and whether she is adequately completing her responsibilities. What do you do? So if it, if it was appropriate to talk directly to the superintendent to get more information, I would start there. If the situation was such that it wouldn't really be appropriate to have that conversation with her, then I would probably go to another board member and say, you know, here's what I'm hearing or what I'm seeing. Do we need to bring this to the whole board? Do we need to take action on this or, and try to kind of get guidance that way? You receive a call from a parent who wishes to file a grievance against a district for an action by one of its administrators or teachers. They want you to support them on this issue. How would you respond? Um, I would tell them, you know, again, to kind of go through the proper channels that, of course, my, my goal and desire is to find the truth and to, um, you know, make the appropriate action based on that truth. But until it's actually gone through the process, I can't guarantee my support in any direction. Will your schedule allow you to attend all study sessions, regular board meetings, special board meetings, retreats, and hearings? What about during the day, um, professional and professional travel events? Um, yes, I know it's a big commitment. Um, as a, you know, like I said, I'm mostly a stay-at-home mom. As a substitute teacher, I can choose what days I work or not. So, you know, so work would not be an issue. Um, my husband is supportive of helping get the kids where they need to be um, so that I can be at these meetings. You know, just since this is, you know, a um, 
a sudden appointment. If I'm appointed, I do have a couple conflicts in the next couple, you know, in the next few months. Um, but I would work to as not make any more conflicts, you know, going forward, keeping those times available. So, I, you know, I should be. My days are fairly flexible. If emergency things come up, I should normally be able to make them work. All right. And final question: uh, Why should we select you for this position? Um, I think I have a, I'm a well-rounded candidate. I have a, you know, a depth of knowledge um, with my business degree and a um, little bit of work there. I, you know, have a working knowledge of the financial side and, and just the knowledge that we have limited resources and we can only, you know, they can only go so far. So I see that perspective that we need to use our, we need to be wise stewards and use our resources in the best way for the community. I also have kids in the school district. I've got kids in half the grades at our school district. So um, I have the parent perspective, what, you know, what families are looking for, what's going to help families help their kids succeed. Because when we have policies and procedures that are hard on families, it just it makes it hard for the kids to accomplish what they need to. Um, and as a substitute teacher, I have a teeny tiny inkling of what the teachers are going through. Um, and the resources and support that they're looking for. So I just think I'd, I'd be able to bring a perspective from all of our constituents um, to be able to make that best decision. Um, and I had another thought, but it's gone now, so. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Kabalik. Uh, do you have any final thoughts or questions for us? Um, no, I just thank you for your time and for your service. I know, well, I kind of know how much time and effort you put into this so I'm uh, nervous to even be putting myself out there but I appreciate that you guys are doing it <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you Ms. Cabal thank you thank you Keep us on schedule. We'll go ahead and give you a little bit of sure. a little bit of background. Uh, this is Miss Jennifer Yanis. Is that saying it correctly? That's correct. Yes. Um, so, given each each applicant a little bit of background here, uh, we received 15 or six, 16 applications for this open position. We selected eight applicants to interview with the board this evening. Uh, each interview we're estimating to take 30 minutes or less. So we started at 4.15. We plan to be done by about 8.15. Uh, you're the seventh out of eight candidates to interview this evening. Uh, after we're done with all of these uh, interviews, the board will recess into executive session to consider the qualifications of the eight candidates. This is an open public meeting, which means 
any candidate has the right to attend, any member of the public has the right to attend, but we did uh, let candidates know that the board prefers that candidates are present in the, present in the boardroom during other candidates' interview periods. Um, after we finish the, at 8.15 tonight, we will recess into the executive session, discuss the merits of the candidates, and then at that time, we will have the opportunity to take action. It'll take uh, three members of the board voting in the affirmative for a given candidate uh, to, to have that action stand. If we're able to come to agreement this evening and take action, the newly selected board member would be uh, sworn in on February 28th, two weeks from this evening. And we, all of this is open to watch um, this evening after our executive session is done, but we will also, I, I will call uh, candidates and let them know, and if they don't answer, I'll, I'll leave a, a voice message for them. Okay. Um, with that, please, uh, I guess one last thing. We would expect, we would hope that whoever the selected candidate uh, enjoys their time these few months until May serving on the board, and that they would consider running for this open um, seat by declaring their candidacy in May for a November election. We would also encourage any of the non-selected candidates and any other members of the public to apply uh, or to declare candidacy for either this open position, my position will be open for election, it's in a district, and Dr. Kennedy's position will also be open. So if you're in my, my district or Dr. Kennedy's district, you can apply for, or you can declare candidacy in the spring for those positions, or declare candidacy for this uh, position, whether you, an applicant is selected or not. Um, with that, please briefly tell us about yourself. Include any involvement in community service or school-based service. So I've been living for about two years in Pasco. I went and bought a house here. Um, I have a background in marketing, I have an MBA. Um, as far as involvement in community services, I volunteer at the school all the time. I've done field day, I most recently did a pancake breakfast. Um, I went through the clearance to volunteer through the school because I just wanted to be a part of, you know, Longfellow and be able to help out as needed, so. Why are you interested in serving on the Pasco School Board? Oh my goodness, because I am fully vested. My son started um, in first grade this year. I love the teachers, I love the students. Um, they're so full of promise. And I wanna make sure that uh, we pass fair and equitable policies that, uh, that you know are beneficial to students as well as teachers. And, and before we go to the next question, I mm -hmm. guess we didn't introduce ourselves to you. Scott Lehrman, uh, been on the, we've met before, but been on the board for 13 years. Amy Phillips, I have been on the board also for 13 years. Amanda Brown, I was elected, elected last November. I'm John Kennedy, I was also elected last November too. Well, congratulations to you both. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, what characteristics in your opinion make a good board member? Well, you have to be someone who has patience, for sure. Um, you have to have, um, you know, you have to know the policies for the school. You need to be educated in that regards. Um, and you need to be able to listen to, you know, teachers, students, um, especially students, because, you know, we're affecting their future, as well as the public. So you have to be a good listener. Describe the duties and responsibilities of school board members that, as you understand them include what you think are the ethical responsibilities? So I would say um, the duties and responsibilities of school board members, I've been in a few sessions. Um, so they are basically to review policies, um, to evaluate the superintendent and her performance, um, as well as you know if there's an issue within the schools um, to help resolve that. Um, as far as ethical responsibilities, you need to do what's, what's you know, you need to follow the law, um, and the policies for Pasco School District, so for ethical, and, and to make wise decisions that aren't gonna hurt other people. So like students, things like that, so. That makes sense? What do you believe are the strengths of the Pasco School District? We have amazing teachers. I can't stress to you enough. Um, my, my son has been 
uh, from kindergarten through first with some amazing teachers. Like I didn't think anybody would understand my son um, and some of the struggles that he was going through after the pandemic. Um, the, the teachers that they gave him are one of the best fits for him. So I feel like we have great teachers, um, great support staff. Um, so, and the curriculum is really, I feel like we're, you know, being really, I would say like forward and getting our students to be able to read by the time they're in third grade. Um, takes a lot of work on the parents end, but I feel like that's really good strength um, to, to strive for is to get all our students literate within third grade. And I also got a chance to um, do the, to, enter, to go into the high schools and do career day. Um, and you know, all the technical education is really amazing that you all offer. I think it's more than I've ever seen when I was a kid in high school, so great programs for the students. Please describe an experience that you have had in making a decision with someone who has a different point of view than you. Well, I mean, you definitely listen to the point of view. I, I have, have that all the time. I work in marketing and I work with difficult clients. Um, so, you know, just listen to um, their point of view um, and come up with a compromise, I would say. So, I'm not the one who continuously fights and fights and fights and fights. So. This question has two parts, so I'll read the first part to you first. Um, describe your experience in an understanding of how to work as a member of a board or team. So working as a team, um, you know, you make sure that goals and objectives are clearly stated ahead of time um, so that you can work towards them. I think that's basically what we do in, in um, my job. Um, as far as working as a member of the board, um, you all work together to review policies. You are all are respectful of each other's opinions and you come up with a consensus decision. Um, I feel that the Pasco School Board is very organized, uh, very detailed. Um, it's not drama in here. <laughs> so you guys conduct the meetings very professionally. So. And thank you. And the second part of the question is, what is, uh, what is your opinion of how the Pasco School Board conducts its meetings? <laughs> um, well, I've only been to a couple, but um, I feel like you, you guys are very organized when you conduct the meetings. You're not, you let the public have a say. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, John, but you. you're welcome. As a school board member, who do you believe are your constituents? Uh, is everyone in the um, Pasco School District, uh, the parents, the teachers, the admin, Anyone who has a vested interest in the school district, public. All right, the next three questions will describe situations in which you might find yourself as a board member. Please describe how you would respond. You're contacted by a friend who has heard that there's a vacancy for an employment position in the district. They ask, you, they ask, that, you, they ask that you help them get a job. How would you respond? I believe that's a conflict of interest. I don't know board policy, but I do believe that is a conflict of interest to like use your board influence to try to get someone a job. So I would have to decline on that one. You have a question in your mind about the performance of the superintendent and whether she is adequately completing her responsibilities. What do you do? Talk to the superintendent. It's really not that hard. Um. You receive a call from a parent who wishes to file a grievance against the district for an action by one of its administrators or teachers. They want you to support them on this issue. How would you respond? So first of all, I'd want to hear um, you know, the parent's point of view as well as the school's point of view. So I would help, um, I would speak to you guys about like what the policies are um, first to make sure I'm doing the right thing. Um, and then I would, um, be like a mediator, I guess, is between the parent and the school to just try to find work the work the grievance out. Because there's always two sides to a story, right? Like there's kids will say, kids will say <laughs> something crazy, and then the parent will believe them, and then it's you know totally what happened, you know, the, was the opposite. So, will your schedule allow you to attend all study sessions, regular board meetings, special board meetings, retreats, and hearings? What about events during the day, professional travel, district and school events? 
So um, I'm able to block off time in my calendar as needed for for um, things. Um, I work in Eastern Standard Time schedule most of the time, so I get out kind of early. So it shouldn't be an issue. I should be able to block off t uh, events and things like that as long as we have notice of them. So. All right, uh, well, Ms. Yanni, so why should we select you for this position? I would say um, my background, my professional background, as well as the fact that I am making efforts to go through the um, ambassador program to learn more about the school district, which is really helping, as well as, you know, I'm not an argumentative person that you would have to deal with all the time. Um, and I'm used to working in a team. I do that all the time um, in my career, so in marketing. Did you have any additional questions for us or final thoughts? Um, no, not really. I'm just really um, happy that I've been selected and had a chance to interview in front of all of you. So. All right. Thank you for your time this evening, Ms. Thank you. You're welcome.
All right, so we have Mr. Steve Simmons here. This is uh, the position that he vacated. Um, Mr. Simmons, we had 15 or 16 applications for this open position, selected eight applicants that were invited to interview with the board this evening. Uh, each interview we estimated would take 30 minutes or less, so we scheduled these interviews starting at 4.15 to 8.15 this evening. Um, it was a random draw as to, as to who interviewed at what time. After we're done with, uh, yours is the final interview this evening, after we're done with this interview, uh, we will recess into executive session to consider the qualifications of the applicants. And then the board will have opportunity this evening to take action to appoint one of uh, the eight interviewed candidates this evening. It would take a quorum of the board or three board members to vote in the affirmative uh, to, to select somebody for this position. If the board is able to come to that agreement, the selected candidate would uh, take the oath of office at our next regularly scheduled board meeting on February 28th, which would be two, uh, or two weeks from tonight. Um, the board is hoping that whoever the selected candidate is um, would consider applying declaring their candidacy in May and running for the election in November, but the board also encourages all candidates, whether selected or not, to uh, always apply to run for a position um, as they become open. This spring, uh, this position number five will be up for election, as will my position in district number one, and Dr. Kennedy's uh, in district number two, correct? Yes. Um, with that, we will move on to the questions. So the first question is, please briefly tell us about yourself, include any involvement in community service or school-based service. Okay, so my name is, of course, Steve Simmons. Um, I was born in Spokane and have, was raised in Kennewick. Uh, to, uh, I was actually adopted. I'm the first child in my family, so the oldest. After uh, graduating from Kamaiakin in 97, I uh, served a church mission in the Netherlands and learned to speak uh, Dutch. And then when I came home, I attended school at CBC and then also technical college down in Colorado and graduated from there, came home to work and was able to secure a job here at the airport moved down to Oregon after I met my wife and we lived down there for a while and then moved back up here, lived in Richland and then moved to Pasco uh, with our two young kids and I've been here ever since raising our family. I was able to get accepted into an electrical apprenticeship program here uh, and I was able to get us back into the Tri-Cities and be closer to family. And completed that and have a good career and that's a lot about me. Uh, I, community service wise, I heavily participate in my, my faith and quite active there in a lot of positions. Uh, served, I'm also an avid amateur radio enthusiast and have served in their local uh, club organization there in the leadership there also in throughout my kids sports helping coach their teams and, uh, also politically uh, I serve in uh, local political organizations as well as an elected precinct officer actually. Why are you interested in serving on the Pasco School Board? So, I, of course, uh, was elected and served before, but uh, my interest comes in the fact that, first off, I don't think you have to be a parent to serve on the board, but as a parent of four children that are in the district, I feel heavily invested. And then, of course, uh, concerned about the ways 
wanting to be involved in the decision making process that affects our children and our community and the children that live in our community. So I have a deep desire to serve my community and to be involved in some public service and I felt that serving on the school board was a really a way to do that. Uh, what characteristics in your opinion make a good board member? So I think as a board member you have to recognize that while you do uh, represent your ideals and your beliefs uh, you also have to be open-minded to the ideals and viewpoints of others uh, a good board member is someone I think that can work as a team and is open-minded to the other to the others opinions but isn't afraid to also express the viewpoints that they have to be insightful someone that asks uh, critical questions is willing to think critically and dig deep into the issues uh, to examine and to question be an individual but also be willing to work together as a team Describe the duties and responsibilities of a school board member as you understand them. Include what you think are the ethical responsibilities. So ethically, I think you have a responsibility to serve your community, and you have a responsibility to the students to ensure that they're meeting the requirements that the school district has set in their policies and also then you know, what the state has set. So as a school board member, you're, of course, responsible for setting policy and for determining those policies and also in making decisions that are going to affect uh, the students and the families in the district and those ver the various stakeholders. Um, uh, what do you believe are the strengths of the Pasco School Board? school district so I I think Pasco I think Pasco has a very strong tradition of being very parent focused and also very student focused I think Pasco is on a good track I look at other districts that kind of get mired in a lot of controversy and I think Pasco has been able to work together as a board has very you know, like I described before we have we're willing to work together as a board but dig deep into the issues but come to good good uh, answers seek answers and also good solutions to problems uh, I've had I think I expressed in my in my membership application was or in my my application was you know I've I witnessed one parent who had just moved here expressed some concern about where they were from and the concerns that they would have coming to a new district and I was so proud to be able to uh, express to her that she could feel comfortable here that her child would be taken care of and that uh, the needs of her child would be met and that uh, as a parent if she had concerns that she would be met with a response and being able to get the seek the help or answers to her questions I think Pasco tries very hard represents the parents and the students. Please describe an experience you have had in making decisions with someone who has a different point of view than you. <laughs> so I I'll just give an example from my, my employment. I work in a very procedurally based uh, environment at, in my, where I employed and there's a lot of times where we will read through a procedure but have different ideas of how that is to be applied and you could get very heated and into a very 
big debate about a lot of what ifs, um, but I think it's good to be open-minded and try to see, uh, be empath you know, empathet empathetic and see it from their point of view and understand where they're coming from, but also you know, stating your position. And I've had a, the situation where that's come up uh, over a specific detail and was, I mean, very strong positions on both sides, um, but was able to understand where, what, what they needed, but express what, what really was needed to be done and came to an agreement. It wasn't necessarily a win-win situation, but there was give and take and we were able to move through, move through that situation and get the work done that we needed to get done. It was quite critical to a piece of equipment that I was maintaining. There were some engineering concerns. Did we get through them? Um, the next question has two parts. I'm going to read both questions to you, and if you need me to re uh, repeat them, I'm happy to do that. Um, the first part of the question is, describe your experiences in an understanding of how to work as a member of a team or a board. And then the second part of the question is, what is your opinion of how the Pasco School Board conducts its meetings? So, you know, I'll, I'll so I serve in my, my religious organization, um, and I also serve, have served on, as a, in, my, in hobbies that I've had, and also in political organizations, and you can't, you have to be careful that you're not, have a closed mindset, that you're open-minded. And of course, you need to understand that the, the ultimate goal is to be an, as an effective in governing effectively. And in order to do that, you have to come to agreements and you have to be able to think critically about problems and be willing to listen. So I've, I've had to do that. <laughs> I'm a very, I can be very opinionated, and I know other people can too. And so, and we come with different backgrounds, different influences, and so those all weigh into how we view things. And so, uh, you can't, you can't look at other people, or look down on other people, for how they view or how they think, and you just have to be willing to uh, be very open-minded and be willing to have your eye on the goal of furthering whatever the, you know, whatever the goals of the district are, whatever the goals of the organization are, that that's the ultimate, that you keep that, that mindset. And my opinion of the Pasco School Board and how it conducts its meetings is, there's always room for improvement. There always is. But what I've experienced sitting on the board previously is that at least in my experience, we've, we've had that discussion. We've been able to have some very deep and heated discussions without offending anyone and without being uh, offensive, uh, but being able to dig down deep into uh, the conversation and ask critical questions. And I've also noticed that sometimes we'll feed off of, you know, someone will ask a question that might not be so clear and, but it will, another board member will may step in to offer more clarity to a question and kind of piggyback off that. And I think that's, that's good to do that, even if the, those people have differing opinions about things. I think Pasco has been able to do that. Versus, um, not trying to compare boards, but other boards or organizations where that's not, that, that's not been possible. As a school board member, <clears throat> who do you believe are your constituents? So, I mean, ultimately, the parents and the students and the, are, the, are, are the constituents. Um, as an elected board member and, or as an appointed, that's who you represent. Those are the, I and mean, there's various stakeholders, so I think you represent, you know, all of them. But, those are the main two. All right, the next three questions will describe situations in which you might find yourself as a board member. 
Please describe how you'd respond. The first situation is you're contacted by a friend who has heard that there's a vacancy for an employment position in the district. They ask that you help them get the job. How would you respond? So, so that's so that's funny because, I mean, that's you got to avoid, of course, uh, those conflicts of interest. And how would you respond? Well, I would definitely tell them that that's. I hope that they seek that employment in the district, but there's not really much I can do to help them um, get a leg up or to have any type of uh, advantage in that process. It has to be a transparent process. Um, I mean, I would encourage them and offer them encouragement and in, 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 in their willingness to do so but I can't I would I would have to recuse myself from giving them any advice on how to do that thank you you have a question in your mind about the performance of the superintendent and whether she is adequately completing her responsibilities what would you do So one of the things I would want to know is if, first I would want to know if the superintendent was given clear direction as to what uh, those responsibilities were. And of course I would seek that information from the board and the board president uh, before moving forward with anything else. You received a call from a parent who wishes to file a grievance against the district for an action by one of its administrators or teachers. They want you to support them on this issue. How would you respond? So that's that's interesting because you, you definitely want to understand what the parent uh, and of course you want to understand what the parent is thinking and feeling and you definitely want to uh, acknowledge her concerns. At the same time, though, um, I don't think it would be appropriate to support that without understanding fully what the issue is. And that's something that um, should be brought before the whole board. So I would encourage them to, to email the board, to contact the board, so that they can be aware of that issue. And first, I would, of course, encourage them to follow through with the process that the district has, you know, making sure that they've contacted the appropriate work through the chain of command, I guess you could say first before, um, before just jumping straight to the top. I would encourage them to contact you know, those uh, at the, uh, the lower level first, depending on what the grievance is and where they need to reach out. And maybe I would help them with that and let them know where the best contact point would be. Will your schedule allow you to attend all study sessions, regular board meetings, special board meetings, retreats, hearings? What about events during the day, professional travel, district and school events? Yes, definitely. All right, final question. Mr. Simmons, why should we select you for this position? So I, like I said, answer to one of the other questions is I have a desire to serve my community and I have a deep concern and a deep interest in helping our students and helping the parents and representing them um, I'm invested in our educational system here in our district and in Pasco and also because uh, I feel that I have some knowledge of how that how that works as I've served previously here on the board I feel that I'm qualified to do that to serve and but I would be 
a good representative of our community and of the, uh, the at-large community here in our district, of those constituents and those students. And I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to help and bring new ideas and new viewpoints and be able to uh, help move along the education and support the goals that the district has. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. So I guess finally, um, do you have any final thoughts or questions for us? No, I just, I, I'm grateful for the opportunity that I had to serve on the board. I'm grateful for the opportunity I had to apply and thankful for the opportunity I had to come down here. I was selected as an applicant to come to be able to be interviewed. So I appreciate it. It's a great right. opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Portion of our meeting this evening. It is 8.02. Uh, the board will recess into executive session to discuss. Um, this is under RCW 4231101I, or sorry, 1101H, evaluation of qualifications of a candidate for appointment to elective office. We expect it to take an hour. If it lasts longer than that, we will come out and ask for an extension.
right, it is 9.05. We've returned from executive session. We're into board actions this evening. Uh, the next agenda item, or the, the, the only action that we will consider tonight is for the school board of directors position number five, candidate selection. Are there any comments from the board? I would entertain a motion. Mr. President, I move to approve Rosa Torres for the position of board member number five. I second. There's a motion and a second to select Rosa Torres for position number five. Is there additional discussion? Well, okay, I'll say, so I would say that all of the candidates that were selected to interview this evening did a great job. We were impressed by all of them. We are impressed by their willingness to serve the students of Pasco and the community of Pasco. Uh, we would in encourage any of them to apply for any future open positions. Um, this is an interesting situation. Uh, Mr. Simmons had to resign um, due to his wife being employed by the district. I guess what I want to say is that my wife is currently long-term subbing in the district. It's not a conflict of interest at this point, but um, she would like to have the opportunity to take a position within the district obtained without any influence by me. So I plan on resigning from the board myself. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'll put it in writing the official date. I tentatively plan right now to resign on March 1st, which would be, which would give us one more board meeting to see how our, how our uh, bond turns out and to have a discussion as a board, possibly with the new board member seated as well. And then also give uh, the board an opportunity to go through this process again <clears throat> for my, for my position. So with that in mind, I plan right now because um, I plan on abstaining from this vote. If, if I decided um, at a future point to, to reapply for this position or to run for this position, I'd, I'd like to abstain from this vote, but we will see um, how it turns out and I reserve the right to um, vote if needed. Any other discussion from the board? I, I think I would really like to add to the fact that we didn't just receive eight good applicants, we received 16. And, um, and the quality of applicants were excellent. We had a very difficult time making this decision. I know I poured over those applications for hours because they were stellar. So I appreciate all that applied and, and with this other, you know, it's going to be much more limited um, when Scott resigns because that's a district, not the whole entire district. That's a district area that is much smaller. And I don't know how many of these applicants are in it. I would encourage all of them to reapply that if they're in that because we were very impressed with the, with the caliber of, of um, applicants that we received. Uh, Board President Lerman, mm -hmm. I would just add uh, to what Director Phillips says is I hope that the applicants who uh, applied both in written, in written applications and then also interviewed tonight continue to be involved in the community. Um, Board, uh, Board Member Phillips is completely correct. The applicants were stellar. Great answers during interviews, um, strong applications, and I hope uh, all 16 continue to be active in our community. And I would also like to ex express my appreciation to Superintendent Whitney and her and her staff on um, helping organize all these applications and uh, assisting us as needed as we went through this process. I'll echo all the board members' comments about the quality of all of the applicants who applied for this open board position and um, that it was a very tough decision and if you didn't make it to interviews tonight or didn't make it um, don't become appointed please continue to be active in the community and and um, consider what there is in the future all right there is a motion and a second on the table 
to appoint Ms. Rosa Torres to the open position number five. Is there any additional final discussion? Ms. Richardson, please call the roll. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Dr. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Lerman? Abstain. So there is a quorum of the board. Three members have voted yes. Motion carries to appoint Ms. Rosa Torres to the open position number five on the Pasco School Board of Directors. And with that, thank you again to all who helped prepare district staff for this process. Thank you to all the community that applied for the positions. And uh, I will, when I, 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 like I said, I'm tentatively planning on resigning on March 1st, but I will put that in writing uh, to the district and to the board when I've finalized that. With that, we will adjourn this evening. Thank you again.